rates apply. Subscriptions required to access streaming services. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Amazon is offering sign-on bonuses up to $1,000. Plus, get up to $20 an hour for select roles. The best part? We're hiring near you. So start now to take home something greater. New, higher wages with a sign-on bonus. A range of real benefits and career growth opportunities in a top-rated workplace. So earn more and see how great pay and sign-on bonuses can lead to a greater life for you. Go to Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. This year, we're living summer to the sweetest. We're talking family, friends, and coolers stuffed with Snickers. Extra gum for every road trip and Twix bars stashed in your tent. Because with every purchase of Snickers, Twix, and extra gum, you can collect summer badges and have a chance to win one of thousands of sweet summer prizes. So grab some treats and visit NeverStopSummering.com for rules and free method of entry. Available at your local Wawa. Ends August 31st. Everyone is buzzing about the new suspense thriller, Escape Room Tournament of Champions, which opens exclusively in theaters this Thursday. This movie is edge of your seat fun, has higher stakes, more intense scares, and must be experienced on the big screen. Escape Room Tournament of Champions in theaters this Thursday. Get your tickets now. Portions of the following program will be recorded. WIOQFM, Philadelphia, live, live in the 215 from the Rush Order T Studio. Where you can design your t-shirts for any deadline. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Newtown Township Board of Supervisors meeting for July 14th, 2021, and we're actually live. Haven't been live for, I think, since March of 2020, but uh, this is a, uh, a good thing. But as, as usual, I, I still would like to, I, I've been reading the same thing every meeting, and I still think it still pertains for us to remember all those that have been affected by this horrible virus and their families, and those on the front lines, the doctors, nurses, EMTs, police, fire, all who answer their call to duty unselfishly. And those everyday important essential workers, the garbage collectors, the supermarket workers, food servers, just to name a few. And here in our township, our management and administrative staff, our public works department, together they all keep our township running. Let us support our local businesses the best we can, and please do not forget to be generous. Most of all, let us treat all people with respect and kindness, even those we may not agree with. As we start to come out of this pandemic, together as a community, we will be stronger when this is over. Tonight, let us also remember a recent passing of one of our own here in Newtown. Mr. Vincent A. Lombardi, a leader, dedicated volunteer, and true lover of Newtown. Please think of him and his family as we bow our heads. If you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Lewis, any changes or additions to the agenda tonight? There's one change, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Chairman, the, uh, under the solicitor's report, an item will be included uh, related to the Purdue Pharma, Pharma bankruptcy settlement. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go into uh, special actions. And as I mentioned, the uh, passing of uh, Mr. Lombardi, uh, we do have a proclamation for him that I, uh, I'd like to read. Um, it's a proclamation in Newtown Township 
Bucks County, Pennsylvania, in memoriam Vincent A. Lombardi, Newtown Township, whereas Vincent A. Lombardi, born in Brooklyn, New York, passed away on June 19, 2021, whereas Vincent A. Lombardi received an undergraduate degree from Villanova University and later a teaching degree and doctorate from Temple University, which led him to a lengthy career in education. And whereas Vincent A. Lombardi was a trusted community leader who cared for the residents and the township. And whereas Vincent A. Lombardi, longtime Newtown resident, also served the Newtown Township community as a former Newtown Township supervisor from 1988 to 1993, a member of the Newtown Township Planning Commission, the Historical Architectural Review Board, Chairman of the Sycamore Street Reconstruction Committee, President Emeritus, and founding member of the Sycamore Street Community Association, and a tireless, tireless and dedicated friend of the Newtown Township community. And whereas Vincent A. Lombardi, Lombardi's selfless dedication, leadership, and commitment to the Newtown community shall live on in his memory. Therefore, on behalf of the community, the Board of Supervisors honors the life of Vincent A. Lombardi. Board of Supervisors, Newtown Township, July 14th, 2021. And here's the proclamation. I'd like to have a, a hand for Mr. Lombardi. Is there, uh, well, let me ask, is there any family member here tonight? I think so. No? Okay. If not, we'll make sure that uh, we will get this to him. Ms. Chairman, if I may? Yes. Uh, first, I, I want to recognize, as you did, Mr. Lombardi's service to the community. Uh, he was a pretty great guy. He served a lot of years ago. And I want to thank you guys, uh, especially you, Phil, for, for reaching out with the proclamation for his family. Uh, I think... We may disagree on items up here on the board, uh, but I think all of us at heart have the Newtown Township in our thoughts and, and want to do the best for our community. So uh, thank you for recognizing him and, and uh, all those years of service that he provided. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll keep that uh, right here. Okay, and moving right along, it's our first session of public comment. Anyone who would like to come up to the uh, podium and make a statement, comment, about anything that's not on the agenda right now. Yeah, good evening, Warren Dallas, Newtown Fire Association. Have three items tonight. First, Newtown Fire Association's new rescue pumper has arrived in Newtown. It arrived on Friday last week. It is temporarily at station 55 across the street getting equipment installed. They're actually over there training tonight. That training will continue for the next month and we expect to put it in service in mid-August. The 2001 rescue pumper that it's replacing was sold to Mayfield Hose Company in Pennsylvania, and they will pick it up when the new truck goes in service. We will be holding a public truck housing sometime in October. Also, you've probably seen the signs, recruitment drive for volunteer firefighters is underway. You may have seen those signs posted around the town. We move them around a little bit. If anybody that is interested and hasn't seen them would like more information, you can text the word BRAVE and the number 1 to 833-915-3087. It's also on our Facebook page, and I said the signs are scattered around town. And last but not least, the Beer Fest is returning this year. It will be on Saturday, September 18th. Tickets are now on sale. You can visit NewtownBeerFest.com for details. Any questions for me? Any questions? All right, thank, thank you, sir. You. Uh, Micah, can we get that information on the Brewfest up on their uh, television? Sure, we'll get it, we'll put something on the website as well. Okay, thank you. John D. April, Newtown Grant, biggest and the best. It's good to see you guys, even you too, John. Um, I'd like to offer, uh, offer my condolences to uh, Vince Lombardi's family. Uh, over 25 years ago when I came to this township, uh, 
you know, he was he was a great Newtown resident, uh, mentor to many, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other people. Some of them I know couldn't make it to the meeting tonight would have expressed their condolences also. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else for public comment? Okay, see none. No minor approvals tonight. Uh, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. I see Mr. Fiddler out there. If you didn't give a report, I don't know what we would do. Good evening, Alan Fiddler, Chairman of the Newtown Township Planning Commission. Here to give you a quick synopsis of our July 6, 2021 meeting. Um, our first item of business that evening was the JMZO amendment. The commission reviewed the proposed amendment uh, to the JMZO to change the zoning of the Scott Farm, a 3.2 acre parcel on Veterans Cemetery property. The VA would like to sell this parcel and Upper Makefield would like to change the zoning from VR1 to CM. The commission recommended that the Board of Supervisors support Upper Mayfield's request. We continued our uh, discussion on the LI and the OLI zoning. Uh, in anticipation of the meeting, Ms. Fountain, myself, and Mr. Shankman met via Zoom with Evan Stone and his staff at the Bucks County Planning Commission. The Bucks County Planning Commission has some experience in guiding municipalities through the rezoning process with an aim toward updating business districts to meet the changing needs as we adapt to the post-pandemic uh, office. The commission recommended that the board request a proposal from Bucks County Planning Commission for modification of some of our permitted uses in the LI and OLI zoning districts. Economic Development Chair Matt Peters was also in attendance and we discussed the EDC's recommendations to explore adding high density residential uses, entertainment uses, and some service uses to the commons. The EDC has also recommended expanding the E5 restaurant use to create a friendlier work environment for employees. I think working with the EDC, we hope to complete this process to revitalize the commons and would also like to ask the Bucks County Planning Commission whether any COVID relief emergency funds are available for economic development in the Bucks County area. Basically, that concludes my report. If there's any questions or be willing to offer to try and answer that. Hearing none. Mr. Fiddler, you said um, about getting a proposal from the Bucks County Planning Commission. Yes, I, I think basically that was the sentiment of uh, the board planning commission that it should be a request coming from the board of supervisors to Bucks County Planning Commission um, to get a proposal for scope of work and the cost associated as well as any funding sources that may be available outside of Newtown Township to help offset Bucks County Planning Commission's expense. Um, they, at the uh, Zoom meeting, um, Evan Stone talked about the Pricket Preserve project that in Lower Makefield, uh, apparently Bucks County Planning Commission was uh, working with uh, Lower Makefield uh, to process the different information and come up with a, a couple different options regarding how that track should be developed for the benefit of of Lower Makefield Township. Um, he felt that the same expertise that they employed there could benefit Newtown Township if, if the board is of a mind to secure their services. So that's basically. Mr. Fiddler, is there a, is it just Mr. Stone or does he have an entire team of? Oh yeah, he does have an entire team. He has, um, they reshuffle and rename some of their committees right. on the county level. Okay. Uh, but Lisa Wolf, who's working on the comprehensive plan, Evan Stone, of course, is, is the premier lead. Um, but there were two other individuals that have uh, expressed their desire to you know, offer assistance if 
if Newtown Township is is interested. So, it, it, it uh, from the Planning Commission's perspective, the more people that look at this and give us uh, some expertise far beyond our limited capabilities uh, should be a benefit to Newtown Township. So, would you welcome input from a partnership with the Economic Development Committee? Certain, certainly, I, I think it, the perception that, you know, the Planning Commission has been charged to look at specific criteria for rezoning, an Economic Development Committee has been looking at the global aspect of what to do in, in the business commons to get it uh, together. I think we should be able to work together. I, I think the Planning Commission's expertise is in the nuts and bolts of what kind of footprints, what kind of setbacks, what kind of uses, what kind of uh, other amenities are necessary to make this work. Um, understanding that revenue generation from a prosperous business commons is a critical factor for a new town township in the future. So I, I see it as a partnership um, and I think the board should direct, you know, each of the committees or how to determine which of the responsibilities should be handled by each of the two different uh, committees that are all volunteers. Okay. I had a, a question. The business commons uh, zones are specific to Newtown, so it doesn't involve really other townships, is that correct? That is correct, and uh, basically uh, Bucks County Planning Commission has done some of these things in other parts of the county and they thought that bringing in some of the things that have worked in the revitalization of other districts may be beneficial in bringing that to Newtown Township to at least explore. Okay, thank you. Okay. Alan Allen, if you, in our packet we have the uh, synopsis from June 15th, which would have been after our last meeting. Uh, I don't know if you have that, if you want to go over anything on, on there. <coughs> Okay. Oh, we have we have redundancy. Thanks. Uh, yes, we had a meeting on the on the fifteenth of June. Um, the zoning uh, hearing board, basically, uh, the Carta at eight Gray Circle. Here, this. In, uh, applicant was in attendance to review an application for the variance for 29 foot rear yard setback where 50 feet are required to build a concrete paver patio on an irregularly shaped lot. Mr. Percarada was advised to get letters of support from the surrounding neighbors including the property owner or tenant farmer at the rear of the property. Again the permission recommended that the supervisor should not oppose this application. Uh, Monhan at Nine Gray Circle, Rupa and Ram Monhan were in attendance to review an application for a variance for a 38.41 foot setback where 50 feet are required to build a wooden deck on a irregularly shaped lot. The commission advised the Monhans to bring letters of support again from the surrounding neighbors and recommend that the board not oppose the application. The Kirkpatrick slash Nyland at one pheasant run, Gene Kirkpatrick, engineer for Westcott, formerly White Engineering, and Brad Lampton, a COO of Westcorp, were in attendance to review an application for sign variance to allow two signs, one 44.3 square feet and the second at 29.66 square feet, where 20 square feet is the maximum. Each sign will be placed on the building facade, one at a height of 18 feet and the second at 20 feet. The building was, had been severely damaged by storms and the new facade is being added. The signage will replace damaged signs. The monument sign in front of the building will be removed. The commission advised the applicant to be prepared to reduce the size of their request should the zoning hearing board request it and also review any possible lighting restrictions with the code enforcement officers. 
We recommended that the supervisors not oppose the application, recognizing what West Corp is a longtime business residence of the Commons and is a large single tenant building. Under conditional use, which you'll hear later this evening, five guys at 2804 South Eagle Road. Uh, Mr. Blackburn represented the applicant for uses E5 and E6 eating place and takeout restaurant in the space formerly occupied by Salad Works. The ratio of restaurants remains at 31.18%. We recommend that the board approve this application subject to the certain conditions, including compliance with CKS review letters dated June 2nd, 2021. Hall all guys, 2820 South Eagle Road. Again, Mr. Blackburn represented the applicant for East E5 and E6 eating place and takeout restaurant in the space formerly occupied by the melt shop. The ratio of restaurants again remains at 31.18%. It is noted that this restaurant will only have 18 seats while the former tenant had 43 seats. We recommend that the board approve the application subject to certain conditions included compliance with CKS review letters dated June 2nd, 2021 concludes the synopsis for the June 15 meeting. Thank you. Any uh, questions for Mr. Fidler? Seeing none. I guess, okay. Uh, Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Alan. Uh, we'll move on to uh, board members' reports. Uh, I, I, again, I'd just like to say that it's uh, nice to be back live and see all my fellow supervisors' lovely faces and also see the public and hopefully uh, as people feel more comfortable, they will, they will start. I, I understand there's still a, a little bit of uh, apprehension, but uh, as, as time goes by, maybe we'll see more people come into, the, uh, into our great room here. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fisher is celebrating his wedding anniversary down in Key West. Um, I know a lot of us are jealous, but um, I'm sure he's having a great time. So. I'll, I'll move it to uh, Mr. Mack. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I attended two uh, Environmental Advisory Council meetings, one on June 14th and one July 12th. Uh, briefly, they talked about um, uh, an interest in establishing a collaboration on projects with uh, the Newtown Borough and other EACs, local EACs. Um, Ms. McCarran, uh, wrote an article for the newsletter, I think, on uh, 389 bird uh, species on the brink of extinction. Is that correct, Mr. Lewis? I guess it was submitted to Parks and Rec for them to um, review for publication. Um, well, I will have to check with the, public or the uh, Park and Rec Department. Uh, they discussed options for getting the word out to residents about uh, EAC activities and projects, uh, such as more frequent updates to the EAC page on the township website and revamping the Newtown uh, Township Advisory Council Facebook page, which I didn't know uh, somebody set up. It's not an official page for the township. Um, and the EAC supports the Parks and Rec grant application for improving trails and cleaning up the diseased trees at Clark Nature Center. Um, they also discussed uh, soliciting support from local businesses of a voluntary ban on single-use uh, plastics. And uh, they will do some more research about other, what other municipalities, local municipalities are doing in that area. Also discussed was uh, a tree bank. I recall that Mr. Worthington promised to donate 28 trees to the township. And I think the consensus of the EAC was that these trees should be planted in Roberts Ridge Park. Is that correct? And um, hopefully the EAC will be able to talk to Parks and Rec about that and uh, get this going so that they can plant. I guess it has to be done in the fall. Um, I think that's it for that, probably. And uh, the Tech and uh, Communications uh, Committee met on uh, June 28th. <clears throat> uh, committee member Brian Miller, who's a new member, he's um, 
very adept at uh, website development. He gave a short preliminary review of the township's website, and he emphasized the importance of performing regular analytics to determine how the website is performing or what needs to be improved. Um, other committees, such as the EAC, want to make better use of the website to reach out to the community. Having analytics regarding their pages would help them evaluate their campaigns. Um, the members of the committee are willing to help the staff, uh, you know, run a, a analytics report, which would take about uh, two and a half minutes to do once the report is set up, uh, and it's pretty easy to do. The other thing I discussed was the use, uh, the technology, use of technology to host hybrid meetings, uh, which allow the public the option of attending. I noticed that some people were not able to attend here tonight in person, and those people who are not able to attend, the people who are uh, sick, have kids, or whatever, uh, might be able to use a technology such as Zoom. And I would note that even at the technology committee, there were two members who could not attend that night. One had a flat tire, and one had to take care of his kids that night, and they both were able to participate in the meeting via Zoom, much as you would participate using a, um, uh, a phone. And also I noticed that the Zoning Hearing Board had one member attend by uh, having a uh, Zoom with an iPad set up right over here. And uh, I think uh, at the EAC there was also, uh, I was able to attend uh, when they set up in the table here a Zoom, and I was able to hear and see everybody, uh, and all the committee members did attend in person. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have to see the Park and Rec report for July 14th. I uh, registered today for the following upcoming program starting soon. Skateboarding camp, the Artist Den, Creative Theater Camp and Tie Dye Camp. And I guess Mr. Fisher missed that before it went to Key West. Uh, follow us on social media for updates about programs and park happenings at Newtown Fun. It's at Newtown Fun. And don't forget, pre registration is required for all parks and recreation programs. You can register online at NewtownFun.com or call the office here in the Township Building. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Oxley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I attended the Economic Development Committee meeting on July 1st, um, where we discussed um, uh, presentation edits for a potential work session coming up where Mr. Peters, uh, the chairman of the committee, would go through some of the uh, progress that the EDC has made and some recommendations that they'd like the board to take into consideration. Also, we uh, made some edits to a draft article for the township newsletter. Um, that should be coming out pretty shortly. Uh, also, uh, I attended the Planning Commission meeting on July 6th to hear Michelle Fountain's recommendations on different uses in the business comments, as Mr. Fiddler allu alluded to earlier, and um, different rezoning efforts that could take place. Um, obviously, we need a, a proposal from the Bucks County uh, Planning Commission on their scope and capabilities, so looking forward to that. And uh, I attended the Newtown Sewer Authority meeting yesterday, and that is it for my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along, we're on to uh, public hearings. I guess our first uh, public hearing is for Five Guys, 2804 South Eagle Road, conditional use hearing. Mr. Blackburn. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before Mr. Blackburn uh, commences, I would uh, like to mark uh, some board exhibits uh, for this hearing, if I may. Um, board exhibit one will be the proof of publication of notice of tonight's hearing. Uh, board exhibit two will be a photograph depicting the posting of notice at the property of tonight's hearing. <clears throat> board exhibit three will be the application uh, along with uh, a cover letter that accompanied it uh, and also a plan depicting the location of uh, this particular proposed use in the village at Newtown, along with a proposed seating plan. Uh, exhibit 
B4 uh, will be the June 2nd, 2021 letter from CKS engineers reviewing this application. And those are the board exhibits uh, for this application. Um, back to you. Okay. I guess uh, back to Mr. Blackburn. Good evening. Joe Blackburn from Whistler Pearlstein here on behalf of the applicant Rockham 5G LP uh, with respect to its application concerning the approximately 2,300 square foot tenant space located at 2804 South Eagle Road. Uh, the subject tenant space for purposes of orientation is located in uh, the uh, easternmost portion of the existing building in the southwest quadrant of, of the shopping center. Uh, probably most familiar to members of the board and the community at home as the former site of uh, Salad Works. Applicant proposes or seeks conditional use approval tonight for an E5, E6 eating place use, similar to that which previously occupied the space um, in the form of a Five Guys, which, uh, as I'm sure many of you may be aware, offer handcrafted uh, burgers, shakes, and french fries. Um, the applicant proposes uh, 23 indoor seats, uh, 10 outdoor seats, um, all of which would be in conformance again with the prior. Yes. Just for the sake of uh, explanation, uh, you mentioned E5, E6. Could you just explain yeah, what they are? Absolutely. Um, the E5 uh, is the restaurant use, and the E6 is a, a, um, a technically a drive-through component, which long-standing practice for these applications, we've included that not for a drive-through component at all, but in order to recognize that there would be some takeaway. So. Good, good clarification, back here in person, I'll you know, get back in the swing of things. But yes, the E6, despite the reference to that, is not a drive-through component. It is simply to reflect the contemplated takeaway, if you will. Um, uh, as I was saying, the, uh, the existing, or rather the former use, was that of the Salad Works, a similar uh, E5, E6 use. Uh, we would be taking over the exact same building footprint with the exact same seating um, so that uh, such that we, we do not feel there would be any any increase decrease or change whatsoever to the impact on the on the center at all um, the outdoor seating is is currently situated as it is uh, now um, in reference to um, or I guess pivoting um, to uh, Michelle miss miss Fountain's review letter dated June 2nd which accurately summarizes the uh, operational components of the use um, I would reiterate that um, we are remaining at that 31.18% restaurant um, uh, percentage of the total square footage in the shopping center. Um, you heard me say that number last time with the, uh, the chopped uh, application, um, but as this is a, a, an E5 place going into a former E5, there's obviously not going to be any change to that 31.18%. Um, Addressing a few of the other comments in Ms. Fountain's review letter, um, we do note that, yes, the 10 outdoor spaces which are reflected on the floor plan which was submitted with the application uh, would need to be compliance with all, all building code and fire accessibility standards. Uh, that's a will comply. Um, the um, n manner and frequency of the deliveries would be via box truck uh, approximately two to three times a week. Um, we do have... We do have uh, rather extensive um, loading and rear parking here for deliveries. Um, one of the benefits of the existing space um, is that we can kind of keep all that to the rear, whereas, as you're familiar with some of the new spaces, we're not able to do that. So um, that's certainly something we're able to accommodate here. I would just again reiterate that um, E5, E6, going into a former E5, E6, I think they serve the same. Um, peak hour meal times, if you will. So we would, uh, you know, respectfully submit to the to the board that there would be no no change whatsoever to the operation of this center as a result of this uh, use taking over the former Salad Works um, operation or space. I am joined by Gene Snyder um, from the applicant, and I can make myself or Mr. Snyder available for any questions that any members of the board may have. Any questions? Um, yeah, you mentioned the, the deliveries, and I've been thinking about this because it's mentioned all the time, um, and uh, there are lots of uh, properties and restaurants there that are getting deliveries three, four, five times a week. Uh, do you have some kind of a, a schedule of all these deliveries? I mean, uh, the, the township is supposed to, I guess, approve this, the seek. Uh, CKS letter was mentioned that I mean I'm not quite sure how to oversee that process if it's necessary even uh, but I was just curious how do you keep track of all that um, well uh, 
I guess the short answer is that the applicant um, for this application would not be responsible for that oversight. That would obviously be a more macro um, sort of approach by the property owner, Bricksmore. Right. Um, and I can tell you that they do coordinate uh, and encourage uh, collaboration between the various tenants to stagger their uh, their deliveries. A lot of the a lot of the restaurants, in particular, are overnight dead drops, um, off peak hours. Certainly, uh, I'm not sure of anybody getting five deliveries a week, um, but that is something that is worked into the leases and is again on a more macro level with Bricksmore and the respective tenants. Yes. So you haven't seen any problems with that? No. No. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, there was uh, an article in today's uh, patch about the Newtown Volunteer Fire Service uh, is dwindling quickly. And I know that uh, Warren Dallas here mentioned the Beer Fest. And I just want to mention for the owners of Five Guys and other restaurants that the Beer Fest is, is looking for sponsors. The Beer Fest is the number one uh, revenue generation for the Newtown Fire Association, and they depend upon it very heavily. So they're currently looking, and you maybe should talk to Mr. Mr. Dallas, and he can help yeah, you there. That would be a tremendous opportunity for a new business to you know, announce itself and immediately immerse itself in the community. So that's a fair point. I think we'll make sure to put you in touch with Mr. Dallas before we leave. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I'll just ask my normal question here. Well, besides ambient music. Yep, no, the no ambient is, music, and, in, the fluff in regards, is already, and the fluff is already built into the hours, yeah. In regards to the hours. Yeah, we've... Um, that's okay, 11? We've already um, built in the maximum possible uh, contemplated, you know, hours of operation in anticipation of, uh, you know, not needing to come back here if they need an hour on either side, yes. And the applicants... Well aware of that this that Correct. situation. Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing I'll go back to what Mr. Mack was talking about the uh, um, when Bricksmore finally comes to us to to perform their traffic study of the of the Bricksmore Village of Newtown, mm -hmm. will deliveries be included in that traffic study? So you know. certainly, I. I, I it, especially if that's a request, I see no reason why that couldn't be uh, incorporated. Yeah, and well, Mr. You, Mac doesn't want five deliveries a day, so correct. I just want to make a week, sure a week. a week, okay. Well, a day too, a month. Yeah, uh, but uh, just to make sure those, those traffic patterns will also be incorporated. We in will. I'll I'll make a note that um, the board would like to see the delivery traffic in quarter, uh, included in that uh, that study. Yes. Okay, and, and naturally the. Um, the percentage of the 31, what is that, 31.18, uh, 20% is not affected because this is occupying an existing restaurant that was there previously. Correct. The Salad Works was the same 2,300 square feet. It was previously included in that calculation. We're simply subbing a new tenant for that same space. So there's no additional square footage being used for E5 or E6. Excellent. Uh, I guess at this time I'll... I'll give the applicant a chance to come up and maybe, uh, I'm sure we all know five guys, but if you want to just uh, plug your, your business, plug feel your free business. to do it. Uh, well, bef before we do, before we do, uh, I think we ought to swear the uh, witness in. I do. My name is Gene Snyder, and I'm Chief Operating Officer for Five Guys, Burgers and Fries, which I guess our company name is Rockland 5G. Um, I've been with the company for about 16 years. We serve hand formed burgers and fries, uh, fresh cut fries every day, uh, hand spun milkshakes. That's, that's our our thing. A lot of our burgers are well done, juicy, every time. I don't say guaranteed. <laughs> I'm under oath, can't guarantee. <laughs> you're, you're under oath, so what? Uh, I don't know if I, maybe I didn't hear, but can you just explain? why it is called Five Guys? What, uh, what's the history? It's uh, down in Virginia, a, a guy by the name of Jerry Morrell. He uh, was an insurance, this is the long version of the story. Uh, he was an insurance salesman for many, many years and he was tired of being an insurance salesman and wanted something different. Uh, he became, he started this burger place and is back in the hole in the wall, back alley place and he ended up having five sons. And as the sons got older, 
he asked them, I'll pay your way to college, or do you want to work for Five Guys? <laughs> At the time, it's the burger place. It wasn't Five Guys. And each son decided that they wanted to stay with the dad and work in the business, and he has the five boys, so hence the name Five Guys. Thank you. No, no. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Schneider? Mr. Schneider, yes. um, is your operating as a franchise, is this your first time doing this? Uh, th we're, we currently have, but for, as far as presenting here, yeah. yes, it is the first time. Okay. Do you have, and so no other, you have any other five guys that you? We have a total, our, our franchise group owns 39 five guys. How many? Five. I'm sorry? 39. 39? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure you stay. That's yeah, all. Yeah. We're staying. Uh, <laughs> Uh, burgers and fries, shakes. Yes. Uh, you know, we're a pretty healthy town, so <laughs> any uh, vegan or chicken options we on that menu? We do have a veggie sandwich. Don't get it. I'm sorry? A veggie sandwich. Veggie sandwich, It's okay. not a patty. It's actual just vegetables on a bun. Okay. Um, but we do have that alternative. Okay, very good. And a milkshake. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I, I know when my sons were at Penn State, uh, five guys were their staple, and they tried to convince me that I should have five guys. I, I tried it once, but okay. I'm willing to try it again. <laughs> it's, it's a good sandwich. I, but, but you said well done. I mean, does that mean well cooked then? Or? Well done, cooked, well done, yes. Okay. Yeah, there's no pink. We try to kick it without. No pink? Yeah, no pink. Yeah, we don't go the option. You can't have a medium rare. You can't have a, a rare burger. You have to have a well done burger. Okay. It's guaranteed to be juicy. If not juicy, we'll make it again for you. All right, great. And Five Guys has fed a few different uh, presidents, from what I understand, yeah, uh, in the around. Washington just, um, area. Yeah, it's been a while. We've been around. So. If it's good for the leaders of the country, I guess it yeah. could be good for the new town <laughs> residents. Yep, yeah, yeah, burgers to go. Yeah, yeah. Thank sure. you. Appreciate Thank you, guys. It. Mr. Sander? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> if the board is of a mind, um, it would uh, be to entertain a motion to grant the application of Rockham 5G LP doing business as five guys for a conditional use to operate an E5 eating place and E6 eating place drive-in, which in this case will be a takeout, not a drive-in, uh, at 2804 South Eagle Road at lot number two in the village at Newtown Shopping Center. The proposed restaurant will occupy approximately 2,300 square feet at the location previously occupied by Salad Works. Approval is conditioned on the applicant's compliance with the following conditions. One, compliance uh, with the CKS engineer's review letter of June 2nd, 2021. Uh, two, um, the number of uh, outdoor uh, seats will be no more than 10, and the number of indoor seats will be no more than 23, and the clear width between the entrance and the outdoor seating must meet all applicable building codes. Three, the hours of operation will be seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Four, a maximum of eight employees are planned at any one time. The number of shifts will be two per day. Five, there shall be no hazardous, flammable, or explosive materials that will be stored or used in the building. Should this change, the applicant must immediately notify the township of the presence of such materials, how they will be stored and used safely, and the measures in place to deal with any emergent circumstances that may arise due to their presence and utilization on the premises. Six, deliveries shall be by two to three extended box trucks per week. All deliveries and parking of said vehicles will be to the rear of the building and scheduled so as not to interfere with the safe operation of all the businesses in the village at Newtown, including pedestrian and consumer traffic. Seven, there shall be no noxious or hazardous impacts generated by these uses. Should this not be the case, the hazardous impacts are and hazardous impacts are present due to its operation, the applicant must immediately notify the township of their presence, how they will be rendered safe, and how the public will be notified of the danger present. <clears throat> Eight, there will be no outdoor sound system permitted for voice or music. Nine, 
trash receptacles will be provided as required by the applicable township codes and trash pickup will be scheduled and coordinated with the other tenants of the village at Newtown, sufficient to keep the public ways clear of debris at all times and so as not to interfere with normal shopping center traffic during hours when stores are open for business. 10, the applicant shall provide written confirmation that it has received approvals for public water connections and sewer connections with sufficient EDUs to satisfy the requirements of the appropriate agencies. 11, the uses shall be ADA compliant and 12, all fees and costs associated with the uh, processing of this application by the township must be paid in full before issuance of a certificate of occupancy. That is the proposed motion. All these con conditions okay? They are, yes. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion to uh, Mr. Sanders' explanations? So moved. So moved. I have a second. Second. A so motion is second. Any questions from the board on this motion? From the public? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes 4-0. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, second public hearing, Hal Al Guys, 2820 South Eagle Road, conditional use hearing. Uh, as we did with the last hearing, Mr. Chairman, I will uh, mark board exhibits prior to Mr. Blackburn um, making a presentation to the board. Um, exhibit B1 will be the proof of publication of notice of tonight's hearing. Uh, exhibit B2 will be a photograph depicting the posting of notice of tonight's hearing at the premises. Exhibit B3 will be the application that was accompanied by uh, a location uh, plan uh, depicting the location of this particular unit in the village at Newtown and also a proposed seating plan. Uh, and Exhibit B4 will be the June 2nd, 2021 uh, review letter issued by CKS Engineers. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Blackburn? Great. Uh, thank you, Joe Blackburn, again from Whistler Pearlstein here, uh, this time on behalf of MMA Newtown LLC, doing business as Halal Guys with respect to their application concerning the approximately uh, 1,600 square foot tennis space located at 2820 South Eagle Road. Um, for purposes of orientation, the tennis space in question is uh, almost dead center in that same um, southeast quadrant of the existing building or existing structure in the Village at Newtown Shopping Center. Um, as the members of the board may recall, it is the former site of the Melt Shop um, E5, E6 eating place use, which was probably one of the first conditional uses that we did for um, the, the village at Newtown. Um, again, uh, the applicant is seeking to simply supplant an E5, E6 eating place use in the form of halal guys, which serves uh, authentic American halal food consisting of chicken, beef, and um, falafel platters and gyros in place of the um, Five Guys Melt Shop. Um, Notwithstanding the E5 and E6 designation, obviously the E6 is simply to, again, recognize that there would be a contemplated takeaway component, absolutely no drive-through contemplated. Um, once again, we are putting uh, an E5 use into a former E5 use, so again, we have no increase in that 31.18% restaurant component. It's a, a simple square foot per, per square foot swap um, from the former uh, melt shop use. Um, I would note, however, that as Mr. Fiddler previewed, notwithstanding the exact same square footage, the melt shop use, um, if you will recall, had, well, I wouldn't expect you to recall, but I will tell you, had 43 um, seats contemplated. And it, notwithstanding it being the same exact square footage, the current proposal contemplates only 18 seats. So notwithstanding the uh, same square footage, it's over uh, a redu reduction of the seating by over half, uh, which will certainly uh, help hopefully assuage any uh, concerns um, with respect to traffic or the other impacts that the use would have. Again, um, the E5 uh, use proposed halal guys services the same sort of peak hour rush that one would expect for uh, the melt shop. So we once again contemplate no change, increased decrease, well, probably a decrease, if anything, due to the reduction in seats. 
but certainly no increase in any of the impacts uh, in the shopping center. I am again in receipt of uh, Ms. Fountain's June 2nd review. Uh, I think the only outstanding question um, raised in, in this review is again with respect to deliveries and as we heard with the last uh, application, um, we are fortunate to have a substantial rear loading area which would accommodate deliveries two to three times a week via box truck, um, which again would be scheduled um, you know, on a macro level from Bricksmore so as to uh, not have any conflicting deliveries. Um, I will save Mr. Patel um, the, uh, the, the having to come up and, and give a spiel for Halal Guys. I'll, I'll do my best to do it on his behalf. Uh, Halal Guys started, as I understand it, um, uh, as a street cart um, um, in, in New York City. And um, due to the overwhelming popularity from those street carts in New York City, it has grown to a, a, a global, and that is a literal, uh, a global uh, chain. Um, with several, obviously, uh, locations uh, in the United States and um, throughout the globe. I, there are, I believe, three other locations in the state of Pennsylvania, both uh, in Philadelphia and in King of Prussia. This would obviously be the first one in this area. Um, and it is obviously a, um, a, a food group, if you will, that is not otherwise represented in Newtown. So I think it's a, a, a good bit of diversity, something that's going to fit a... Uh, uh, well, service a, a new a new uh, cuisine and a new option for the residents. Um, against that backdrop, I'll make myself and technically Mr. Patel available for questions. Although I'll try to field as many of those as uh, as possible. Say that you want to form a uh, motion first, or uh, that's uh, up to you, Mr. Chairman. If you want to have board uh, questions before we do that, that's sure. Does any, yeah. anybody have any questions your, for Mr. Blackman? Your choice. Well, I, I would just repeat that, again, uh, you might consider being a sponsor to the Newtown Fire Association Beer Fest. Oh, hold on. I, we will absolutely uh, do that. And Thank uh, you. so the Halal guys and the five guys can compete for who, who gives the best sponsorship. We'll make sure the to best put guys. guys. Yeah, the best, best guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure to put uh, Mr. Patel in touch with Mr. Dallas before we leave. Thank you. Yeah. Um, more of just a comment, I, I'm really pleased that we have uh, a diverse um, array of different restaurants that can serve our community. And um, I have sampled Halal food before. It's quite fantastic. Um, so, you know, I'm excited for it. Just one question. Any lamb on the menu? Yes. Very good. Yes. I didn't, Mr. Blackburn didn't share that, so I want to make sure you get your due, you know? Yeah, well, I... The gyro. You know, I apologize. Where's, where's yes. your vote pivoting on that? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you know, yes. Lamb is actually a healthy meat, so I'm just saying, but okay. Thank you. Mr. Davis, you have anything? I just have a question in regards to the, uh, the seating, and, and it's nice that it was scaled down, but since the previous establishment um, was permitted with 43 seats, would this mean that at uh, some time in the future, as it becomes more popular, uh, an increase of seating may happen? Um, well, for two reasons, no. One, uh, not without coming back, obviously, because we're, we're seeking approval for 18. So if and when they wanted to and, and were able to, we'd obviously have to come back and amend the application. But more, more significantly, um, notwithstanding the same square footage being used, there is going to be a substantial um, re- organization, if you will, of the interior, such that if you see on the floor plan that was submitted with the application, there's really not going to be room for any more seats, given um, the prep and kind of the, the, the display and service um, line that they have. So uh, 18 is the max, candidly, that the, the space could accommodate. Okay. And 18 seems to be sufficient. I mean, I don't want to shortchange anyone here. I mean, if you wanted to uh, ask for more seating, you could do that now. You could put 18 seats, but but you still have the capability. Kind of like the time aspect. If he were to apply for 30 seats, wants to put 18, but later increase, you don't have to come back here. I, I presented that question to the applicant, okay. and uh, again, based on the floor plan, you know, without a substantial reconfiguration of the layout, it's it, there's they can't even accommodate more seats. Okay. So, uh, appreciate the opportunity, but I think 18 is going to be good. I have one other question. Sure. Uh, I, f I forgot to ask. Um, one of the things the Environmental Advisory Council was uh, talking about, I think I mentioned the single 
uh, use uh, voluntary ban on single-use plastics. And you mentioned the takeout E6. Uh, you got a lot of uh, restaurants there that are takeout, and uh, I'm just uh, curious if any of your applicants, maybe how our guys have any policy on uh, single-use plastics. I don't, not that I'm aware of, or that the applicant is aware of. Okay. It's a, you know, it's a, a global chain that obviously, you know, has a, a that would be from a much, a much higher level trickle down. I mean, uh, certainly, every effort can be made, but uh, he'd have to go back to New York to <laughs> somewhere. I'm not sure where. Okay. I don't know. But um, you know, I was at another restaurant and. Uh, they had nice uh, cardboard and paper uh, bags for takeout, and uh, I think it was very uh, good way to deal with that problem. Well, it's certainly something we can look into, and um, you know, to the extent possible, I'm sure everyone's conscious of that. And you know, to the extent it's able to be incorporated, I don't see any reason why there would be a resistance to it. Any other questions? Okay, Mr. Sander. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to grant the application of MMA Newtown LLC uh, doing business as the Halal Guys for a conditional use to operate an E5 eating place and an E6 eating place with drive-in, but this will be takeout, not drive-in. Uh, at 2820 South Eagle Road, building number one, in the village at Newtown Shopping Center. The proposed restaurant will occupy approximately 1,636 square feet at the location previously occupied by the Melt Shop. Approval is conditioned on the applicant's compliance uh, with the following conditions. One, compliance with the CKS Engineer's Review Letter dated June 2nd, 2021, uh, including a maximum of 18 seats, all located indoors. Two, the hours of operation will be seven days a week between the hours of 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. Three, there will be two shifts of no more than five employees per shift. Four, there shall be no hazardous flammable or explosive materials that will be stored or used in the building. Should this change, the applicant must immediately notify the township of the presence of such materials, how they will be stored and used safely, and the measures in place to deal with any emergent circumstances that may arise due to their presence and utilization on the premises. Five, there shall be two to three extended box truck deliveries per week. All deliveries will be made to the rear of the building, so they will not interfere with the safe operation of all the surrounding businesses in the village at Newtown, uh, including pedestrians and consumer traffic. All truck parking, if necessary, will also be to the rear of the building. Six, there shall be no noxious or hazardous impacts generated by these uses. Should this not be the case, and hazardous impacts are present due to its operation, the applicant must immediately notify the township of their presence, how they will be rendered safe, and how the public will be notified of the danger present. Seven, there will be no outdoor sound system permitted for uh, voice or music. Uh, eight, trash receptacles uh, and removal. Trash receptacles we, will be provided as required by the uh, applicable township codes and trash pickup will be scheduled and coordinated with the other tenants of the village at Newtown, sufficient to keep the public ways clear of debris at all times and so as not to interfere with normal shopping center traffic during normal business hours. Nine, the applicant shall provide written confirmation that it has received the appropriate will serve letters from the public water and sewer authorities, including the proper number of EDUs required for these uses. 10, these uses shall be fully ADA compliant. And 11, uh, all fees and costs associated with the processing of this application by the township must be paid in full prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Okay, all conditions satisfactory? They are. Okay, do I have such a mo motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions from the board? From the public? 
Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4-0. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. It's good to be back and see everybody. Uh, we have no land development tonight. Uh, reports of officials. Uh, engineers report. Thank you. Um, our item tonight is financial security release number two for the Three Pens Trail development. Based on our inspection of the work completed to date, we recommend that the township release the amount of $239,830 to the developer. Okay. Do I have such a motion? So moved. I'll second it. So a motion to second. Any questions from the board? From the public? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4 0. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think on to the uh, solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First item on our report this evening uh, is uh, the traffic committee resolution. Uh, at a prior meeting, the board authorized our office to draft a uh, resolution. Uh, re-establishing a joint traffic committee uh, with Newtown Borough. We have drafted that resolution and it was uh, in your packet for uh, review for this meeting. Uh, the action item that I would request if the board wishes uh, would be a motion to authorize us to send the traffic committee resolution to Newtown Borough uh, for its consideration and comment. Okay, do I have such a motion? So moved. moved. Second. Second. Motion. Second. Any, any uh, further questions from the board on this uh, resolution? Um, I was just thinking about um, having the barrow on this traffic. I mean, what's the uh, logic of that? Can somebody speak to that? Well, I mean, this this isn't something new. It was. Uh, Looks like it was established in 2009. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and what it is is basically to, um, I guess, discuss the traffic patterns which go through both municipalities since we're so closely aligned. I mean, uh, um, what is it? Washington Street, Jefferson Street, the Center Street are basically the intersecting intersecting streets, and as we know, traffic either residents going into the borough or borough residents coming into the shop into the township. And that's what it was. It's basically a, uh, a, a discussion committee to make sure that the traffic patterns, the lights, and so on um, can, are, con um, are conducive to uh, proper patterns. Can you do me a favor and the public a favor to, to read just that one paragraph that describes what this committee is responsible for? Sure. I'm looking at the... It's just uh, one paragraph in there that goes through it? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at paragraph F as in Frank. Um, it says duties. The Newtown Joint Traffic Committee shall have the following duties. One, develop and maintain a working knowledge of the township and borough's existing road, trail, and signage system. Two, make recommendations with respect to the transportation needs of the township and borough. Three, make recommendations that promote traffic enforcement and pedestrian safety in the township and borough. Four, make recommendations that address circulation and safety issues in the commercial districts in the township and borough. Five, make recommendations that improve bike and pedestrian links within the township and borough and with neighboring municipalities. Six, make recommendations on traffic calming methods. Seven, make recommendations on grant monies that the township and borough can pursue to help finance uh, transportation improvements in the township and borough. Uh, eight, advise the respective planning commissions and the board of supervisors and borough council on the traffic impacts of developments in the township and borough. And nine, seek input from the community on these duties. So. Their uh, realm of responsibility is uh, restricted to public property, not private property like the village at <coughs> Newtown Shopping Center. Well, I would suggest that while they may not be able to um, make recommendations or regulate the traffic within the village at Newtown, that traffic has to come out onto uh, township and ultimately in some cases, borough roads, uh, and that would certainly be within their ambit. 
Okay, because I was also thinking about walkways and trails because it's supposed to be uh, uh, promoting walkability in the shopping center. <clears throat> well, yeah, they do mention trail, uh, you know, um, working knowledge of the trail system and also to promote um, pedestrian safety uh, and um, right and pedestrian that, links within the township. Pedestrian biking. safety was also a concern expressed to me by a few residents in the area by uh, the Iron Hill Brewery and uh, traffic zooming through there. So I, I know there's uh, traffic problems in other areas, but um, this is a major area of complaints. Anyway, thanks for reading that. Certainly. Okay, any other questions in regards to this uh, resolution? And, and the resolution is uh, we're just making a motion to send it to the borough. Correct. Okay. We're not adopting it tonight. Okay. <clears throat> uh, do we, I mean, they haven't seen this yet? They have not seen this draft yet. Okay. They are aware, uh, they were initially asked whether they wanted to participate. The feedback to their solicitor was yes, they would like to participate. I drafted this, I didn't want to send this to them before this board uh, saw it and approved it um, in, as far as form and content go. Uh, and uh, we'll send it off to the borough if you wish, uh, get their comments and uh, ultimately come up with the final resolution We'll have to do a separate resolution because this is an intergovernmental cooperation um, matter uh, to approve this resolution. <laughs> I know, uh, but uh, you've got to meet the uh, intergovernmental cooperation law. And the establishment of the committee, is this the, this the same as it was uh, prior committee? Yes, um, I, I borrowed liberally from the uh, prior uh, resolution, the 2009 resolution that established um, the joint committee and also uh, it was amended in 2012 to um, increase the terms from one to three years and we've provided for uh, three year terms for the members except the initial members um, terms are staggered. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? Seeing none, I call the question. Wait, we have a question. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <coughs> Thank you, John D. April and Lieutenant Grant. Uh, you just got to remember one thing that I keep on saying. Uh, I, I know some of you guys are dense up there. You, you, you don't understand. Uh, the township and the borough. The township is like the donut. The borough is the donut hole. You can't get to the borough unless you come through the township. Township guys get through the, the uh, bypass. The borough doesn't touch the bypass, you know, but the borough has to go through the township. So to give the, give the borough equal say, and no matter what it is, shopping, traffic, whatever, you know, they're the hole, we're the donut. You know, some people up there seem to like the borough because they live closer to it. You know, most of Newtown lives on the other side. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I hate to say this, but uh, Mr. DeApril brings up a good point. There's eight members, and does that mean four would be appointed by the Newtown Borough and four from the township? That, that's the way it reads, yes. Okay. Eight members, four of whom are appointed by the Board of Supervisors and four appointed by Borough Council. The four township members shall consist of one member of the Board of Supervisors and three residents of Newtown Township. This resolution, because it's Newtown's resolution, does not speak to the composition of the borough members, but it does call for eight members, four from each municipality. Yeah, I just, again, I just, uh, you know, will fall back on what Mr. April said. John, don't fall off your chair. I don't want you. But, but I, I, I do have to think that, um, one, we have more roadway. We have more, and, and basically, yes, to get to the township, the borough ha has to come into the township, but I don't have to go into the borough to come home. Um, I just think that this isn't uh, equal representation, although if you want to say split representation, yes, but I just think that this isn't equal 
uh, among the township and the borough in regards to a couple things, the roadways, the population, um, the amount of businesses. Uh, so, I mean, I, 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 um, I have to disagree with the composition of the members of this board, of this committee. I, I just don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's fair to Newtown Township um, to give that equal, represent, equal representation. Um, well, I don't know how, how does the committee operate if they, do they come to consensus? Do they have a vote? You got eight. Yeah. It's, it's uh, not uh, conducive to resolving differences. Uh, in favor of one or the other since you don't have an odd number. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that. Um, again, this was taken from the previous resolution. I don't think that's the reason it didn't work before, but I mean, these are all good points and certainly open to uh, possibly adjusting the number of members of the committee to nine, um, which would be an odd number and prevent any tie votes. Uh, and um, make five of them um, township members and four of them borough members, if that if that's the board's direction. Uh, well, that, I mean that's the direction I would like to see this go in, and it's not not picking on the borough. I'm just saying that we represent more of the population, and you know. How many? They're, they're, getting, they're getting equal representation on this particular board. And like I say, there may be no conflict at all. But, but I just think that um, we, represent the, we represent the township, and I think we should be looking after the township's best interest, and they look after the borough's best interest. How many residents are on there versus board or council members? Well, we, we only address that for the township. There's one supervisor and the remaining members, as written, three additional members, possibly changed to four additional members, would be uh, Newtown Township residents. The borough will have its four members, and in, in their resolution, they'll determine how they want those to be, whether they want a council, borough council member on the committee or not. You think it's a problem getting nine versus seven because we're having problems filling vacancies in other committees. It could be seven members, uh, four township, three borough. I think it was a problem getting four members <laughs> last time. We had two, two townships. Five two members, <laughs> three township, well, two I, borough. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, that when, when I saw eight members, I thought, my goodness, uh, this is basically uh, the school board. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why it's on the agenda tonight, this, for this discussion to happen and to, for the board to give me direction on what it'd like to see ultimately sent to the borough. Well, what do we have? We have a, uh, a motion and a second on this? Well, yeah, we have a motion and a second to send this version. I would recommend that if that doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, that um, the maker uh, withdraw its motion uh, and um, the seconder withdraw its second as well. Mary, who's the first and second? Uh, well, there's many pages left. <laughs> Dave made the response and made a motion, and it was the latest second. I withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. So I guess next meeting you'll come with a new, fresh draft uh, making the township having more members by one than, than, the, than the borough. Okay. And, and the, does the board have any particular size of membership? I mean, I make it seven. I think it should be five guys. Five guys. Oh, John. All right, John. why don't we knock it down to seven? Seven. Which would make... Uh, four, three. Four, four township, three, three borough. Yeah. Um, well, instead of me making that change, and coming back here to you, would the board want me to make that change and send it to the borough in that revised form instead of coming back here 
if the rest of the resolution is in good form. Yeah, because I'm we're not going to meet for a month or so. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, fra I'll frame a quick motion. It will be a motion to authorize our office to revise the draft resolution to reflect a seven-member board, four members from the township, three members from the borough, and once that change is made, to send the draft resolution to the borough for review and comment. So what you want us to do is vote on the changed resolution, of which we haven't seen. Just authorizing, you're not adopting it, you're just authorizing me to make that change and send it to the borough instead of making the change and bringing it back to you to just say, oh, okay, well, Dave did what we told him to do. Um, but that's your prerogative. Well, I, I never... Well, we're not, again, we're not enacting, we're not adopting it. The motion originally was to send it to the borough. Now you're saying you want a change made. Well, I can revise it and send it to the borough under the same motion. Uh, but again, we're not adopting it. Uh, the outcome will be the same, and that is to send a revised resolution to the borough for their consideration. Uh, again, I hate to beat, beat the heck out of this, but when was the last time we even had a traffic committee? <clears throat> well, this joint one was established in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, there was a Newtown only traffic committee, I believe, that was established 2010 maybe. Um, uh, originally, I had drafted a resolution establishing a Newtown township only uh, traffic committee, uh, but it was the board's um, um, direction that uh, I expand that to include the borough and ask them if they wanted to uh, participate, which they said they did. Well, the, the reason I'm asking is um, we haven't had this for quite a few years. And I, I'm just wondering, why is this even being discussed again when we know that it's, it's hard to fulfill committees of any size? Now we're, we're creating a new committee of which we want people to become members of when we have openings on every committee across the board. Now, uh, I mean, when there's a traffic situation, uh, I think that probably the, the best traffic committee is the Board of Supervisors. We know what's out there. We, we hear the complaints. We get the emails. Now we're going to have a layer between traffic impact and, and us to tell us something that we're out there driving in traffic every day of. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to, to grasp why we're doing this. I, I don't have any Whose idea was it originally? I think it was Mr. Fisher's. Was it Mr. Fisher's idea? It was a, um, a resident. Um, emailed in and requested that we look into reopening the traffic committee because of some concerns, um, you know, recent accidents and so forth. So, But um, when there's concerns, they could come to the Board of Supervisors they, or to Borough Council. They can. They could voice their, their uh, concerns, of which we are here to establish this seven or eight or nine or ten member committee. One is going to take forever. And my question is, in the interim, isn't there still traffic going to be out there that we're going to be questioned about? Uh, I, 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 I guess the traffic questions would go to the committee instead of to you, Phil. I mean, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Well, no, what I'm saying is it's going to, I'll, I'll take bets on how long you think it's going to take this committee to form. And what I'm saying is in that time period that we're trying to find seven members to fulfill these, these, this committee, isn't there still traffic happening that we're going to be aware of? Well, it's not the traffic that we have to control. It's we form committees to give us advice. Well, and then it, why are we here? Listen, <laughs> I've been, I've been wait, on this wait a board. minute. I've been uh, on this board can I, point of order, can I finish my, yeah, well, no, my yeah. comment? Okay, go ahead. You know, um, all our committees are different experts who advise the board 
we can't be an expert on everything, and we're not experts on traffic either. And, um, you know, to give the community more input into what's going on, not only with traffic, you're just talking about traffic, but we're talking about walking lanes, bikes, and other forms of uh, transportation or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it'd be nice to have some more input to make decisions, that's all. Well, we have 20,000 input out there, which are called the residents, of which they could come and give their input at any time. Again, I'm not an expert on traffic patterns. What I am an expert on is being stuck in traffic and, and knowing when there's, there's timings on the lights are incorrect. You could ask any, anybody who's been on, on the board currently in the past, Mr. Davis is the, the second, uh, second senior member of, of this board, to establish a new committee takes so much time and so much effort we could have a committee just to, to have a committee of who gets to speak first up here. I mean, you're going to burden the township with so many committees that nothing will get done. Now, we again are out there in the community. We see the traffic that happens. We see the traffic patterns. And again, this committee hasn't been established since 2012, I believe, was the last time. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I, again, I haven't seen well, traffic come to a standstill. And, and again, are we to govern by committee? Are we here to make the decisions? Now, some people think we take surveys all the time, and that's how you govern, by surveys. Well, if that's the case, then we're not needed here. We just put out a survey and see what everybody wants. I mean, this, this is, again... I'm, I'm, I don't want to beat the death, beat the hell out of this. But you are. But, yeah, I am because it's. It, I mean, I could have Mr. Shankman come up here. Mr. Davis can give talk about committees being established, and they'll they'll probably tell you the same thing. Most of these committees become established, then after a certain period of time, they disband. But we put all this effort into doing this. And we're the final word. If we don't want to be the final word, then we don't have to be up here. Mr. It's simple as that. Mr. Chairman, I, I think that perhaps based upon the debate and Mr. Fisher not being here as he proposed it, maybe we should just table this until our next meeting. Well, right now it's, it's not happening. The only thing that is happening is Mr. Sander to make any changes without our authorization right now. And what I'm saying is I never have approved any kind of resolution which either is going to be advertised or approved without a vote from the board. So, so what we're doing is, and no disrespect to Mr. Sander, we're giving him carte blanche to rewrite this without any of us seeing it. Well, that's and presenting the, the, it to the board. It's, it, we're, not, we're not forming the committee. We're just uh, writing up a resolution and handing it to the uh, borough council. Maybe they have some uh, ideas and input as to whether this is needed or not. And it starts the conversation anyway. And we haven't established any committee. We're not voting on that. Well, then they could monitor the traffic in the borough because they're the borough representatives. We monitor it, monitor it in the township. Again, uh, we have we have two gentlemen here running for office. Are you campaigning in the borough, Kyle? Are you campaigning in the borough? I am not. David, you campaigning in the borough? I don't believe so. Well then, <laughs> I don't know. Where well, I'm maybe no, <laughs> maybe you better watch the doors you're knocking on there. But but what I'm saying is, our Things obligation really is to the borough. township. And, again, nothing against the borough, but they have their job. We have our job. Well, could we uh, put a traffic item on every agenda so we do talk about it? No. <laughs> All right. So I think this went somewhere that it wasn't supposed to go. But to my you know, original comment, I think Mr. Fisher should be here and perhaps 
we can pick it up a different time. You know, because uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I think you don't really believe in having a committee at all. And well, let's, well, because historically, I'm the only one that has seen this committee exist. Right. And guess what? It's non-existent. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. Well, I would agree to table this until Mr. Fisher could come back, and we can. Bring we're, it not, up we're not voting on anything. So yeah, there, there's no. There's no motion yeah. on the floor to table. So the action would not be to okay. table. The action would be to take no action. And if the board wishes, it can advise Mr. Lewis to place this on an upcoming agenda. That will be done. Thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, uh, you're still up. Item number two on our report, <clears throat> with some trepidation. Um, at the last meeting, the board approved a conditional use for Chopped Creative Salad Company, LLC, uh, a uh, use E5 and E6 uh, in the uh, village at Newtown, 2910 South Eagle Road. We prepared a decision for that, and uh, it would be appropriate for a motion to approve the conditional use decision for Chopped Creative Salad Company, LLC. All right, do I have such a motion? Okay, I'll second it. Any questions from the board on this uh, motion? Did you want to establish a committee to see if CHOPPED uh, can be established? <coughs> that might not be a bad idea. There you go. We'll, we'll, it'll take us about six months for that. Just joking, just joking. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, any questions from the public on CHOPPED? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes 4 0. Thank you. Third item on our agenda tonight is uh, the Intergovernmental Fire Services Agreement with, dare I say, Newtown Borough. Um, I would um, um, ask the board uh, what it wishes to do about this. The brief history is that um, the township is providing the borough with fire services. The borough is not paying the township for those services. I drafted an agreement uh, at the board's behest uh, with a Newtown Borough uh, that would assess a $300,000 per year fire service fee uh, on the borough, payable $25,000 a month based on the percentage of time that the Newtown Fire folks uh, spend in the borough and the um, township's budget for that activity. Um, there was there has not been a response for over a month from the borough, uh, and uh, I was asked to place this item under my report for discussion uh, by the board to see uh, what direction it wishes to take. Now, this this twenty five thousand that we're uh, proposing that they pay us is that is that going to be invoiced to the to the borough? Yes. Okay. Also, are we going to go back and retro, um, retroact what they owe us for what period of time? How far are we going to go back? January 1st, 2021. Okay. Um, what happens when they don't pay the invoice? <clears throat> um, we have to take legal action against them to enforce our fee schedule. And how much would that cost? I have no idea. It depends on the level of uh, resistance. Uh, it could cost um, you know, thousands of dollars if it goes to uh, court uh, and, and gets appealed. Well, did you want to, did we want to discuss what the negotiations were like? Uh, again, Mr. Fish is not here. He also participated in that. And I only have some email from him with his notes that I could read. Mr. Mack, you, you were part of some of those discussions as well, correct? Yeah. Well, you know, if you want to share. Well, it was uh, very difficult negotiating, and they came up to $118,000, I believe. And uh, we were willing to come to a lower number than 300000 But uh, me and Mr. Fisher, Mr. Fisher and I felt that they were immovable. 
And uh, they kept, and it's unfortunate that you make a reference to uh, the number of calls and so forth. And I know that uh, uh, Chief Forsyth is not here. He was also involved in those negotiations. So we don't have all the people here who were involved in the negotiations, and Chief Forsyth was uh, very incensed that they were not at covering the cost of one fireman, which is around, uh, I guess, 150000 160000 a year. And, uh, you know, they weren't willing to do that, and they kept on going back to the number of calls, and they had this complicated formula that to me sounded like it was just a, a way to stall and stymie the negotiations. And uh, I said, I'm not going to take part in those negotiations if that's all that they're doing. And they're not willing to uh, compromise beyond this 118,000. So that's why we uh, broke off the discussions, basically. Did you, did you, did it come to a point where you said, we're not going to talk anymore, forget it? It's well, we, like walking away from the table yeah, almost. That's right. We okay. said, this is not being productive. Okay. We don't see any reason to have another meeting. Mm -hmm. And that was it, basically. So historically, I know that this is a topic that's, I know, um, Mr. Chairman, you've been on the board quite some time. Historically, this has been a constant theme with the borough, correct? Well, uh, absolutely. Okay. The, that, that donut hole is so important. <laughs> um, and, and again, I understand Mr. Fisher's not here, Chief Forsyth's not here, but that eliminates us from making a decision? Oh, I, I think we can make a you decision. You made a decision already when you walked down. You said you couldn't take it anymore. You made that decision. Uh, I mean, next month, if Mr. F uh, Chief Forsyth's not here and you're not here, do we press it off another month? Now, I understand you're saying, what happens if they don't pay and we take legal action? And Mr. Sander naturally says thousands of dollars. Well, we're paying thousands of dollars to our firefighters every time they go into that borough since 2000, January 2021, even before that, because I sat in on negotiations with the borough three years ago. As a matter of fact, Ms. Dix was a supervisor. How long hasn't she been a supervisor? That's how long we've been, been trying to negotiate this. So I just feel we just keep passing it on if we do not make a decision. This is another case of let's just wait and make a decision. We're becoming the, uh, the Board of Supervisors of tabling. Let's just table everything. Let's table, let's table, let's table. Let's table. Instead of making a decision. I don't get it. Well, Mr. Chairman, I don't think that we, anyone. Uh, you ready I to make a decision? Absolutely. All right. Mr. Davis, you no, want to make a decision? Okay. Uh, what, what's the motion? My recommendation would be for <coughs> the board to make a motion to authorize our office to draft a resolution amending the township's fee schedule to add a fee for fire services for Newtown Borough based on time spent in the borough and the cost thereof. All right. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> okay. I have motion second. Any further questions from the board? I got a, a question. I mean, <laughs> this has been going on, as you alluded to, Mr. Mr. Chairman, for a long time, and obviously probably been tabled or walked away from. But is there something deeper on their on their financials where they just can't pony up the dough? Because it's well, obviously necessary for the residents of the borough, and they obviously know that they've been getting a free lunch. But well, they, uh, they've known that, for, I'm sorry, go ahead. And, they want to pay, they well, want their residents to pay what our residents pay per capita. Right, okay, but obviously it doesn't work that way based upon our residents and the larger amount versus the smaller amount that they have, so I would, I would encourage us to be firm in this decision that we, we move forward. So wait a minute, though. Are we voting on the 300000 25000 a month? Is that it? Well, I'm going to prepare a resolution that sets forth that fee that will be brought back to the board for a final vote to adopt the resolution amending the fee schedule. 
this motion is just to authorize but me to draft it. You're going to base it on the number of calls made to the No, I'm basing it on information I received from Mr. Lewis and uh, Chief Foresight uh, regarding the percentage of time that Newtown Fire spends in the borough while it's providing fire services well, I, I to the borough. I can tell you that Mr. Foresight, that Chief Foresight, was very, very adamant in covering at least one firefighter. He couldn't really care less from what I heard his comments about the, percent, about the percentage of calls or whatever the hell it is. And so you're going to base it on that, and they're going to come back. Well, they can come back any way we want. We're going to sue them, I guess, so whatever. They've, they've tried every argument in the book. I, I even heard an argument based on population, which is, in my opinion, a lame argument. And my response to the person who said that is, I don't care if you have one resident in the borough. If that resident calls our fire department 20 times a day, that's the issue. So they base it on percentage. They base it on, we're basing it on a fair cut here. We send how many guys on a, on four, four firefighters have to answer that call every time something comes in. And that's 120 times four, $480,000 on the road to the borough of which our residents are paying the taxes to pay these people. Not the borough residents, they're not paying the taxes to pay the salaries of our firefighters. They're not even paying $300,000, which covers two firefighters. I, I don't. I think the thing that they have don't to shoot do. Don't me. I'm just. I'm, not saying, I'm just explaining because again, I've seen these talks. I think what has to be done is, I believe, for them to establish their own fire department would cost approximately four to five million dollars. Now, what they have to assess is four to five million dollars, or pay the township three hundred thousand. That's what they should be explaining to their residents. Hey, you guys are going to get hit with a $4 million bill. Or, hey, why don't we pay the township $300,000? I don't understand. Seems like simple mathematics to me. But maybe this will wake them up. Well, it's pretty or complicated. Or we could sit back and we could let them go right ahead and establish your $4 million to $5 million. How many mills will that be on top of what they're charging in taxes today? I mean, you got to consider they got us over a barrel. You can't deny them fire services. That would be unconscionable. So they know if they're called, you know, like my wife, I won't say what my wife used to say about firemen, but uh, when they call, they got to come. So, you know, uh, that's the reality, um, again, no matter what we do. And I understand, but again, I'd like to see them explaining $4 million versus what they could have paid at $300,000. i would like to see them explain that to their residents. Next budget time, when now they have to start budgeting for $4 million instead of $300,000. Well, I'd like where to they, see how, uh, how filled up that council room will be when, when they have to do that. That $300,000, I'm not quite sure where that came from. It seemed like it was pulled out of hot air. We had problems. Uh, defending 300,000, basically, because there was no input from the board. You're talking about the board making a decision. I called up members of the board to ask, well, what, what could we do to move this forward? Nobody really responded. Okay? I think right now we have a motion based on an amount that our professionals believe is fair. I say that's what we start with. I'm going to go with that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any questions from the public? But we don't have an amount yet. We just have. We have three hundred thousand paid, twenty-five thousand. Is that what we're voting on? Yes. You're voting for to authorize to me to draft that and bring it back okay. to the board for action at a future meeting. All right. Would that be the following meeting or? Sure. Okay. We well, just. I. You want to just get it over with, you know? So. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Mm. Any questions from the public? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Did I hear four? 
Yes. So, passes 4-0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next item on our report are the uh, zoning hearing board hearings scheduled to be heard at the August 8th, um, 2021 uh, zoning hearing board. Is that correct, August 8th, or is it August? August 5th. Should, be, should say August 5th. Um, there are four applications. Um, all of them are residential in nature. Uh, there are uh, a couple in-ground pools. Uh, there's a um, enlarging of a patio, and there's the installation of a uh, new patio um, on residential property. Uh, I wrote a memo to the board that appeared in the packet. Uh, the question is, uh, does the board wish to take a position on any of these applications? Hearing no. crickets, I'll take that as a no. Uh, next item is a, an update on the Wawa uh, Provco um, zoning hearing board application. Um, just to refresh the board's memory, um, <clears throat> the Provco company that owns the Wawa property and wishes to develop a Wawa on Lower Silver Lake Road, uh, across Lower Silver Lake Road from the Crossing Community Church, um, filed and zoning hearing board application seeking a special exception to permit a convenience store gasoline station use on the property and also seeking variances for the number of fueling pumps and the number of signs and size of signs. The board uh, authorized our office to oppose only the requested variances concerning the gas pumps and the signs. Uh, there have been two hearings so far before the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, Mr. Van Leuveny represents the applicant. Uh, he has gotten, finally gotten through uh, all of his witnesses, and I have cross-examined all of his witnesses. Uh, the next hearing is scheduled for August 18th, uh, and um, we will pick up with the testimony of the townships uh, planning and uh, zoning expert, Mr. David Babbitt. Uh, I will cross. I will uh, ask him direct questions. Uh, he will be cross-examined by Mr. Van Leuveny. Uh, that will conclude the township's uh, case. Uh, Mr. Van Leuveny has indicated that he may have rebuttal, uh, a, a rebuttal witness or witnesses uh, following Mr. Babbitt's testimony. So uh, we will handle that in due course. Um, if I had to guess, <clears throat> I'd say we probably won't finish um, next time, and there will probably be a fourth hearing, but I would think that that's probably, uh, the that'll probably be the last uh, hearing. The side, both sides will be permitted um, to make argument on the record. Uh, in addition, both sides will be asked to prepare findings of fact, conclusions of law, and a legal brief uh, on the legal issues uh, raised by the testimony and the application. Uh, and we will certainly prepare that and submit it to the Zoning Hearing Board uh, in a timely manner. Are there any questions about that proceeding? Um, I'll just ask again, do you know when we might be able to get a transcript? Um, not exactly, John. I'm hoping within the next two weeks or so. Uh, we we do pay for that, right? Yes. Uh, we, it just takes, that's how long they take. If you want to pay extra, <laughs> I can reach out to the I don't court know. How reporter. How much do we pay for that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. In, in the hundreds of dollars for each transcript, for sure. Um, if you want, I can ask for expedited service. Uh, well, the meeting's not going to happen until next meeting, August 18th. Correct. So if it's not by the end of this month, you know, I would have concern. I, I think it will be by the end of this month. So August 18th, I'm assuming this is a special meeting. Correct. This is the only thing on that agenda, and the hearing previously was continued to that date and time certain. So you won't be reporting to them on August 5th, which will be the regular Correct. day? Correct. Right. Anyone else on Wawa? So we don't, we don't, there's nothing. No, no action. There's just an update. Uh, finally, on our report, um, the Purdue Pharma bankruptcy settlement consideration. Um, the, as, as the board knows, uh, the board hired outside counsel to um, 
represent it in a very large, uh, all-consuming uh, national lawsuit uh, against certain opioid manufacturers, distributors, and uh, other folks associated with opioids based on the um, opioid crisis I, I think we're all aware of. <clears throat> As part of that, one of the main defendants, Purdue Pharma, um, and uh, the family that, uh, that owns Purdue Pharma, the Sackler family, uh, have entered into settlement discussions. Well, they declared bankruptcy first. And within that bankruptcy, they entered into settlement discussions for a plan to um, uh, pay um, a large sum of money, the exact number of which escapes me, um, but it would be paid to a fund that would use it to purchase um, uh, medication such as Narcan um, uh, and to provide anti-opioid education, opioid prevention uh, education and um, other supplies and materials um, to folks who need it. Um, the one question that came up with regard to that proposed settlement in the bankruptcy was will the township get any money out of it? The answer is no. The township will not get any money out of it, but the township will have available to it the uh, increased amount of, um, of Narcan slash other treatments for uh, opioid addiction, um, education. Um, that's the best I can do on my uh, limited uh, knowledge of the proposed settlement. Coming into the meeting tonight, we didn't think we had time to even discuss the matter because a response was due to outside counsel as to whether this board supported the proposed settlement uh, with Purdue Pharma and the Sackler family that uh, was due today at uh, 4 p.m. And of course, we didn't meet tonight until 7 p.m. However, we got an email late this afternoon advising that the deadline for responses from municipalities was extended until this Friday, July 16th. So at that point, I asked Mr. Lewis to place this on the agenda so that uh, the board, which has received and I hope reviewed uh, correspondence from outside counsel, um, could consider whether it wishes to take action and either recommend um, or not recommend uh, the proposed settlement. Uh, you said we're not going to get money, but surely, don't call me Shirley, money is involved. Lots of money is involved. And do you know how much money they're paying out total? Um, let me try to find that out. Mr. Lewis, I believe, forwarded uh, correspondence from our outside counsel. And again, this doesn't, this doesn't settle the entire litigation. Right. There are many other defendants. There are other bankruptcies occurring. This is just within the realm of the Purdue Pharma bankruptcy proceeding. Yeah, I'm, I'm just interested in how um, much money is involved. Where does the money obviously, I guess, goes to the state level, and then the state figures out how to distribute uh, goods and services related well, I to the, that. The proceeds would go towards like at Narcan and other types of things for helping out with opioid. All right, the letter unfor from, out from our count outside counsel unfortunately does not address <coughs> that issue, but my firm drafted a memorandum that was uh, sent out that says under the plan, the Sackler families have agreed to pay $4.275 billion in addition to the $225 million previously paid to the United States to resolve civil claims for a total settlement of $4.5 billion. The vast majority of proceeds will be used to abate the opioid crisis. These funds cannot be diverted to other purposes. The plan will deliver more than $10 billion in value, including providing at cost millions of doses of opioid addiction treatment and overdose, overdose reversal medicines. And then it starts getting into how Purdue Pharma will be reformed into okay, uh, a, a different corporation um, with uh, a good intent instead of yeah, bad that's, intent. That's phony baloney, <laughs> but uh, thanks okay. for the information on the numbers. Sure. Thank you. Well, 
Well, and I believe when we were uh, consulted by the first attorney, he had mentioned that Newtown Township would probably not be getting any funds out of these proceedings. And from what I understood at that time, the funds will be distributed to what I'll call um, distressed communities uh, for drug programs and so on, which uh, I guess uh, they do not uh, consider Newtown Township to be a distressed community. But it was worth it for us to be on, on it just as a show of unity with the other townships. Now, Purdue is just one of many. And as a matter of fact, I think he would, they were the first one named in the, in the lawsuit at the time. Uh, is there any mention of money that may come from lawsuits that are going to trickle down to the other pharmaceutical companies? Not as, not that I know of, not that outside counsel has advised me or Mr. Lewis. Okay. Now, is there any, any way that since we're not getting probably funds, but you had mentioned something possibly of getting Narcan supplies for our um, rescue squad and for the police depart department. Is that a possibility? Because it's got to be something in this fight for us to take away. And I, I know it's a good cause, but I mean, if, if we could get supplies of Narcan for the police department and for the uh, emergency uh, emergency uh, rescue squad. I mean that that would be a uh, that would be a plus to, for us. I would think. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, our understanding is guidance from the unsecured creditors committee, which was formed to negotiate this bankruptcy settlement, um, is that much of the value to municipalities will be non-monetary in the form of Narcan and treatment assistance. That, that's the best I can tell you. What is needed from us tonight? Um, if the board wishes, uh, it can entertain a motion to either support or not support the proposed settlement. And that decision, uh, based on what motion you make, uh, will be conveyed to our outside council first thing tomorrow morning. So is there a motion? No, go ahead. What would you like to do? You want I to make, make a motion that we uh, accept this uh, settlement, I guess. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Is that good enough, Dave? Yeah. Okay, I'll second it. That motion is second. Any uh, further questions or discussion points from the board, from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Passes three to one. Thank you, and that concludes our report. Okay. Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> General fund balance as of this evening is four million six hundred and four thousand seven hundred and fifty nine dollars. Plan expiration is before the board with no action required. A question on the plan expiration? Yes. I see that um, Arcadia will be coming before us on the 11th, the first meeting in August. And that's anticipated, is, yes. Is there, any, uh, is there any brief update on this situation? On, on Arcadia? Yeah. Um, Arcadia, we had and recently uh, received correspondence from PennDOT um, that they had rejected all of the uh, alternative accesses to the site that were proposed as part of the stipulated agreement. Um, the only access that they are willing to approve is the U-turn access at Mill Pond slash Diamond Drive. So Pendot believes that that is the safest? Pendot believes that's the safest access point to that site. All right. And who is the contact at Pendot that would have recommended this? Uh, ultimately, um, Frayne Haney was the contact that we had discussions with. So he should be um, the person residents call. <laughs> about the, what I'll call, lack of safety of this one particular U-turn that's going to be. Uh, well, yeah, Fran Haney, uh, Penda. Um, and, and the other. Number two? <laughs> well, we could, we could look it up. Uh, but that's the only update I have as far as that goes. That our consultants have reviews, reviewed the plans, and they have prepared uh, multiple review letters.
matters that the applicant is working to address. Okay. Thank you. Um, I forget where it was. The uh, Actually, we have Chief Hearn uh, here to give his monthly police report. Even Chief. Good evening, sir. Good evening, board members. June 2021 police report, we documented 1,772 calls for service. We logged 23,361 patrol miles on our vehicles. In the month of June, we had 24 arrests. 18 were DUI related, one for an assault, one for a hit and run traffic offense, and four forgeries. I just want to commend uh, Detective Corporal Bartle, if you recall. We had a mailbox theft from Terry Drive at the post office back late last year. He managed to track down all four individuals after they converted the checks to their own deposits. So an outstanding job by Detective Corporal Bartle. Uh, as you know, uh, DUIs, obviously with 18 DUIs, are on the, on the increase. Just a reminder to the public, we will enforce to protect the citizens of this township. Use Uber, Lyft, call a friend, do not drive your car. There were 18, there were uh, 19 cases referred to detectives, three crime scene processed. We had a couple of thefts from autos, uh, catalytic converters for trucks parked in parking lots overnight. It's been happening throughout the, throughout the region due to metal, uh, cost of metals. Uh, one attempted burglary, it's still under investigation. We also had a fraud gift card scam from an elderly resident, uh, which uh, netted a $250,000 loss. We had 68 crashes, traffic crashes, eight injury reported during them crashes, 138 citations were issued, 198 warnings were issued. Notable jobs, on 629, police officer Resta and officer Mystic initiated CPR on an unresponsive male, deployed Narcan, 29-year-old uh, male with success, uh, revived the subject and the male was transported to the same areas for treatment. Also, Detective Joe Camp received accommodation of merit for his theft from autos from 2020 and 2021, resulting in over 1,000 charges for theft from autos. Uh, due to his exemplary, exemplary actions and investigation skills, he, was, he received accommodation of merit. As you know, on June 4th, we unfortunately lost one of our own, our active duty sergeant Frank Ambrose, suddenly passed away from illness served, after serving 25 years with Newtown Township. Newtown Township Police Department would like to thank our elected officials, the neighboring law enforcement jurisdictions, and the community members who assisted and supported us during this loss. To ensure staff and commitments, Police Officer Brian Nolan was sworn in on July 12th the other day. He is married with his first child on the way and comes in as an experienced officer with numerous accommodations from the city of Philadelphia. He's also served with the Cape May Prosecutor's Office. He has an associate's degree from DeSales University and is a graduate of the Philadelphia Police Academy. He's currently in the FTO program. I'd also like to thank Judge Petrucci for administering his oath. Selective enforcement. We had three truck enforcement details with the task force, one in Wrightstown, one in the borough, and one in Newtown Township. Citing uh, 41 inspections, 24 citations, 21 warnings, six vehicles were placed out of service and two vehicles were towed. We did several traffic initiatives for traffic enforcement. And as a public service announcement, Swamp Road will be closing from 8-9 <coughs> to 8-20 between Worthington Mill and Durham. Uh, they're repairing a trans uh, natural gas pipeline or repairing it in the area. So the detour will go up Worthington Mill and south on 413 at Durham and back to the bypass. So you will see increased traffic along that route. Once again, frauds are continuing. Do not give your personal information out over the phone or the internet. Do not click on links to pop up on your computer and then people have access to your computer and then they call you on the phone. That's how this scam occurred for the $250,000 loss. Do not buy gift cards for anyone you don't know to set on an account or to get your grandchild out of jail. Uh, talk to your parents, talk to your elderly neighbors, make sure this doesn't occur to protect their interests. That concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Chief? Uh, I do have some questions. Uh, Chief, I believe it was earlier this month we got some bicycles from the a community partnership with Johnson Kendall Johnson and Bike Works. Yes. Um, question what what's the plan for use and uh, have you started uh, using them yet 
I haven't started using them yet. Uh, we're still in the process of obtaining our, uh, our uniform and uh, uh, protective equipment, helmets, that type of stuff. One of the officers is currently in training in Alabama for cell phone analytics. Um, as soon as he gets back, he's our main instructor, that's Detective Joe Kant. Uh, you will be seeing them on the business districts, in the community events, community uh, parks, uh, engaging the public. Um, depending on staffing, is if I have the staffing, they will be out there uh, in intermingling with both the business and local communities. Thank you. Thanks. Chief, I, I just want to say that um, yesterday, when I looked outside my window, I saw something that I really didn't want to see, but I saw four police cars and there was uh, basically a, uh, uh, a dispute between neighbors. But that's, that's not the issue I wanted to raise. I just want to say I, I went out just like any other nosy neighbor, um, spoke to one of the patrolmen, and I just say um, even under heated discussion with the, the neighbors that were in dispute, these gentlemen maintained their decorum, their professionalism, and uh, just proud to see that those guys were out there. So, although I didn't want to see them out there, I was proud to see them <laughs> out there and that they're protecting the neighborhoods as best as possible. And I do just want to convey that to you. Thank you, sir. You do have an outstanding police department. Our guys are top notch and a professional. Thank you. Um, I want to also say thanks to the police officer who administered Narcan. Uh, that saved the life of a 29-year-old. And the uh, Centers for Disease Control just announced today that uh, in 2020 was the, the highest number of overdose from uh, uh, narcotics, with opioids being the major contributor. And in terms of the number of years of life loss, since that is affecting mostly younger people, like you mentioned, a 29-year-old, uh, there were a lot, uh, almost equivalent to the number of years of life lost from COVID-19. If you consider mostly older people die with COVID-19, mostly younger people are dying from overdoses. So uh, they're saving lives out there. So I wanted to thank uh, the police department for handling that. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chief. How are you, man? Good, sir. How you doing? Good. Man? Good. Thank you. Good. Look very uh, tan. You or me? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. We're yeah. getting there. Uh, the new officer just sworn in. Um, you said he was from Philadelphia? Yes, sir. Department. Is that accurate? Excuse me, sir? He was from Philadelphia Police Department? Yes, uh, we stole him from Philadelphia Police Department, sir. Stole him, huh? That's great. Um, how did that come to be? Was it just uh, that officer wanted to get out of Philadelphia or... Uh, unfortunately, uh, Philadelphia is having a mass exodus. Okay. Uh, I'm still uh, committed to Philadelphia. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I spent 30 years of my career in Philadelphia. Philadelphia has an outstanding police department. Um, they're lacking support right now. So unfortunately, some of their members are bailing out. They're looking for greener pastures elsewhere, and they are applying. Um, there was a hunting, about 187 that took the... Uh, Bucks County Consortium okay. test. I don't know whether 187 of them were all Philadelphia, but most of the applicants that we got for applying for Newtown Township were Philadelphia police officers. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate okay. that. Um, I have another question. Um, I, we were discussing, obviously, a, a riveting debate about um, traffic and committees and so forth, but, um, you know, there's been concerns and, and mentioned to me about uh, speeding down 532 coming off Washington Crossing Road onto Sycamore Street, you know, and then there could be a potential challenge once you get closer to Silo Drive, that intersection by the mm -hmm. Green Parrot and Newtown Pizza. Um, and obviously, you know, we could, as Mr. Chairman alluded to, you know, we, we could kind of notice that traffic is around and there's challenges with speed and so forth. And I didn't know if there was an opportunity that maybe we could get a little bit more enforcement when folks are coming off of 532 or Washington Crossing, especially if it's a green light and they're just flying, you know, there's people that are going to be dining on both sides of that street at Sycamore Grill, Green Parrot. We want to make sure that, and people might be crossing the street as well, so we want to make sure that there's a possibility that we could probably reduce some of the speed in some way, shape, or form. 
Uh, the, the speed limit up on the north side of Washington Crossing is 45, and it, when you cross over Durham Road, it drops to 35. There is signage prior to getting to Durham before you cross over to Sycamore Street side. Um, there was a couple auto peds last year out on Sycamore Street, um, usually at night at darkness. We actually ran a stealth study last last December, January out there where I actually put a machine out there to track the speed of the vehicles. Uh, we collected data on that. We had to limit our resources to where we put them, but the data from the uh, Sycamore Street survey indicated that uh, like 99% of the vehicles were traveling under the speed of 35 miles an hour. So it's not an enforcement initiative. Grant, I'm sure there was 19 that went between, you know, over that. Uh, there was actually 28 vehicles that went over the 35 mile an hour to 40. We can't even enforce that with a conviction. It's got to be within 10 miles over the speed limit for us to enforce it. The state is actually enacting legislation or trying to pass legislation for radar. If they allow that, that would give us the ability to actually enforce them type of motor vehicle code violations without the distance that we need to observe the vehicles. Okay. Um, but I, I am in favor of putting enforcement out there. I will put cars out there or decoy cars out there today. I had the speed sign board relocated down there to Sycamore Street between Silo and Durham Drive, coming southbound to refresh the drivers, and we'll continue to monitor. And if, if, I, if we find violations that we can cite them, we will. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate You're welcome. that. Same time, sir. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you, chief. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, I have two other items, actually three under other items under my report for the board's consideration. First of which is uh, the purchase of uh, three police radios. We had budgeted for the purchase of four in the 2020 budget, 2021 budget, sorry, I'm forgetting what year we're in, uh, for a total cost of $22,000. Uh, the cost of those radios has increased, so we're proposing to purchase three police radios from Motorola Incorporated through CoStars in the amount of $19,752.63. Okay. Well, let me understand. We're under the budget. Yes. Oh, okay. We had budgeted a total of 22000 Okay. Do I have uh, such a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Motion second. Any questions from the board on this motion? For the public? Seeing none, call the motion. Call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes 4 0. Next item under my report, Mr. Chairman, is the consideration to purchase fuel, uh, both diesel and gasoline, through the Bucks County Consortium, as we do every year. Uh, and the low bidder this year was PAPCO Incorporated for both diesel and uh, gasoline. So the appropriate motion for the board's consideration would be. <laughs> approval to purchase the, uh, fuel through the Bucks County Consortium from Cap PAPCO Incorporated. Well, I have such a motion. So moved. Got a second. Second. Motion second. Any questions from the board? From the public? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes 4 0. <clears throat> the last item under my report, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> is the consideration of the board to sell used police equipment. We have a 2014 Ford Explorer with a blown engine uh, with 113,000 miles on it and a 2007 Chevy uh, Tahoe. It's pretty rusted out on the floorboards with 128,000 miles. So we're, we're projecting we can maybe uh, accrue about $2,500 for both vehicles and we're just requesting the board's uh, authorization to sell. Do I have such a motion to sell these? So moved. Moves. Yeah, I got a motion and a second. Second. Um, any questions from the board? For the public? Seeing none, I call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4 0. Um, Mr. Manager, just uh, one question. Um, I know that uh, we have, uh, I, I don't know if it's a resolution or in regards to outside eating on sidewalks. Do we have to do anything to renew that since now COVID has been tamed down? Is there something that we have to do or? The long answer to that, or the short answer to that is possibly. 
Uh, Mr. Sander and I have been discussing that, and his office is looking into what, if anything, we need to do on the township's behalf to either renew that, terminate it, uh, or or uh, let it continue. Okay. But but for the time being, we're okay. We don't have to do anything. Yeah, for the time being, we're, okay. we're fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, real real quickly, um, I, I was asked at the last board meeting to provide a update of, of the budgeting process. Currently, the, the 2022 budget is underway with the first step of being uh, to update and revise the schedules associated with health care wages benef and benefits, followed by the schedules for contracted services, professional services, and the capital plan as we get those numbers in. Uh, the current general fund revenues are $9,827,053 with of the budgeted amount of $15,012,011, uh, which represents 65.46% of revenue. Uh, the current expenditures amount to $4,122,754, which equates to approximately 29.85% of the budgeted expenditures. It's important to note that we do have some significant purchases still coming up in 2021, so that number will jump. But I just wanted to give a brief overall statement of, as to the status of the 2022 budget. Okay. Any questions for the manager? Uh, yes. What's the next step in the budget process? Next step in the budget process is for, for uh, us to meet with all department heads to review the capital purchases for next year that they're recommending. Uh, and to analyze that data and to try to plug it in to come up with a comparable number. When you say we, it's you? It's myself and the finance director, correct. Uh, is there any uh, possibility for some kind of discussion in a public hearing, public meeting, where some department heads may uh, come in and discuss with the Board of Supervisors directly what they might be needing in, in 2022? Typically, we haven't done that. We've done it. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the department heads attend the manager's budget presentation. I understand that, the, but by that time, you got, a, um, you got a provisional budget. It's almost like everything's been done at that point. Uh, because I know in Doylestown, I participated actually in a Zoom meeting where they we're having these work sessions where they brought in the public works people to talk about what roads are going to be needed to be repaired in, in, the, in the following year. So it's, it's giving the uh, Board of Supervisors a little heads up of, you know, some of the details of why, you know, they need X amount of dollars versus Y and that sort of thing. And also gives the, uh, the public a little chance to make some comments. Uh, I know I was a little bit uh, disappointed in the process last year. I know you talk to every uh, board member individually, but I, we didn't have a chance to see what the other board members thought. Uh, when we make decisions, uh, I'm believing it's more of a team process, and I'd like to see us talk together about uh, some of these issues as they come up with more input even from some of the other committees uh, who have been discussing the need for more public input. Um, so I'm just putting it uh, out there that that's, uh, you know, I know that uh, other townships are doing it, and I don't know why we can't do something like that as well. Well, discussion of the budget happens after it's presented in the board. Basically, it's on every agenda from that point until we approve a budget. So there is a lot of time for us to sit down and discuss it. Um, and uh, no, you probably can't know what, what Mr. Lewis has spoken to the other members about because that would probably be in violation of the Sunshine Law if three of us were to sit around discussing it. So the procedure... Um, for I think the last thousand years has been to discuss it during the budgetary time, which, believe it or not, uh, when I was first elected to the board, that discussion took place the day after the election in November. We are starting this process 
probably the beginning of October, end of August, beginning, beginning of October, uh, end of September, beginning of October, which is giving us even more time than what we used to approve a budget for in the past. So there is a lot of time. There's time for the supervisors to take these budgets home and dissect them and come to the meeting. And there were times, I, uh, what, what time is it right now? It's a little bit after nine. I remember when we would have discussions till probably 11 o'clock at night on the budget every meeting instead of what I've seen recently is any questions on the budget? And that was it. So, I mean, there is ample time to discuss it, Mr. Mack. It's just that study the budget, come with questions, and we will discuss them during these meetings. We have two televised meetings every month after the budget is, is uh, presented. So I don't know what they do. Again, I, I don't represent Doylestown Township, and I don't care what Doylestown Township does. We are here to pass a budget for Newtown Township. Now, I, if you want to start the budget process now, it seems highly unlikely we'll have any accurate figures because we have a couple more quarters to go through with transfer tax and EIT tax and so on that whatever Mr. Lewis were to put together, he'd have to dissect again because new figures would be coming in. So to start the process now would be just, it's a, it's a futile situation. But if, if the board would like that and would like Mr. Lewis to, to just uh, consume his time changing the budget every meeting, then okay, it's well, at, it's uh, at the pleasure of the board. Number one, that's not accurate as to what I was suggesting. I was suggesting no numbers actually be discussed, but that the needs from each department, I remember uh, Chief Hearn came in and he discussed what he would like uh, before the board, before the, I think that was before the uh, budget was, the initial budget was presented. And uh, I would like, you know, maybe the Public Works, Joe Scavoni, to do the same sort of thing. I mean, the chief didn't come in here with, I don't know if you came in here with numbers uh, that you wanted to put in the budget. You came in here with needs. You need X more police officers. You need uh, X more police cars. Uh, I know that the Public Works Department has some needs, and I, I'm pretty certain I know that uh, Mr. Lewis will transmit that information, but it doesn't give us the opportunity to talk to department heads and we're making decisions about, you know, these things. And I'd like to get some firsthand, um, you know, opportunity to speak with these department heads uh, and that would only be once a year. Otherwise, we try to stay out of interfering with uh, uh, the business of, of the township manager. But I think this is important. Mr. Mack, I have a suggestion. You can set up meetings and go to each one of these department heads and have a conversation with them and figure out what their needs are rather than them coming well, to you. I think that would show a great sign of leadership to go to these people that work for the township and show them that you care that much about what their needs are by going to them. Well, we do do that. We do that with the Newtown Fire Association. And oh, so I know you know about NFA. I, I, I hear that. I heard, we've heard it a lot tonight. But you are basically saying you want each department head to come in and talk to us. To the public. I want them to You just talk. said you. You want no, to know what their, I, yes, needs, what I their know, needs are. But they'll be here at a public meeting. So the public has an opportunity to also make comments and ask questions. That's more important even than me. I mean, I'm just a representative. I'm not the public. And uh, well, I think you vote, take but quite your vote counts. Well, your vote counts. the public, your the public's counts. vote counts as people are going to be finding out this November. So, mm -hmm. well, that that's the democratic way. But uh, chief, are you in every day? Every day, sir. So any of us can come and talk to you and sit down, have a cup of coffee, and, and so on. 
I'll say, so the chief does not have to come back and like he did last year in public and say what he needs, right? Well, no, he could, but, but if you want to know ahead of time, if any of us want to know ahead of time, we can go see the chief, we can go see public works, we could go go to a park and, uh, park and rec. I mean, like Mr. Oxley said, we could walk into this building any time and have a conversation. Obviously, but you're not getting what I'm saying. You're not getting the public part of what I would like to see. You're only talking about me. I don't want to talk about me. My, my question to you <laughs> is if the public were here and gave their opinion, but you thought of a, that it should be otherwise, are you the elected official? We take the public's concerns all the time, but we have to make these decisions. That's where I go back to saying, you know, I, I always hear this, I always hear this all the time, a, a resident came up to me and said this, and said, who is this resident? Why isn't this resident addressing all the board of supervisors? You're a very popular guy. Residents come up to you every day and, and plead their cases. But where are they? Last That's year, we received they? about 79 emails from residents sent to every member of the board of supervisors. Do you recall that? Yeah. So they're not sending me messages. No, you, you take. Come, please you, take me no, out of the equation. No, I'll ask every board <laughs> member up here. You come into these meetings and you say, a resident came up to me and said this. A neighbor came up to me and said this. I don't know who you're talking to. And I guess I just believe you for face value. But those 79 people put their names on emails and send them to the Board of Supervisors. Not a resident, a neighbor. Again, please take me out of the equation. I didn't start this by saying a resident came up to me and asked that we have a public meeting. Uh, that that's has nothing to do with it. You mentioned I'm your experience saying. with the police. How do I know that really happened? I don't know. Well, you could ask, you could ask the chief because I texted him last, yesterday and asked him about it. So, yes, I do have a witness. I shook hands with one of the policemen Yes, So, I have proof. I didn't say I ran into a police officer. I know who Well, I, ran I didn't into. see your proof. You're asking me to, for proof that you want to see. Mr. But, Lewis, uh, Mr. See Mr. Lewis was in reception of my text which also included the chief. Did you get my text in regard? Thank you. I uh, did not get it. I don't care but if I, you got it. I, I, Next I, time there's a crime in my neighborhood, I'm gonna call you to come and take care of it. Right, if there's a fire in my neighborhood, I'm gonna call you to put the fire uh, out. Come on, let's so not be ridiculous. I, because huh? I guess I have to notify you gentlemen. of everything that Jesus. I do. Jesus. Gentlemen, 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 let's. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh Jesus, my goodness. There, please. Thank you. Hey. Guy can't even come up here and say, can we think about having a public meeting where department heads might come in? I haven't even met. The, I know I can go visit her, you know, but department you should. She should come before the, the board here at some meeting, let the public know who she is. The public's paying her salary. The public's paying Joe Scavone's salary. Scavone, uh, you know, and they paid a hefty increase in salary. And, you know, once in a while, I know he's been coming to meetings, and that's good, and we're able to ask him questions. And that's all I'm asking. It's not about me. So, uh, you know, don't, don't, you know, jump on my, my uh, back because I made a, a little comment, suggestion, for opening up this more to a public type of discussion. Bills list, minutes, and reports. Mr. I guess Mack, that's it, huh? What, you, you want to keep discussing it? I mean, I thought we were done. I know what you thought, yeah. No, you don't know what I thought. You're not in my I head. I know what you think. Maybe I'm in your head, gentlemen, but gentlemen, you're not in my head. Gentlemen, <laughs> bills, bills. I wouldn't want to be in your head. Oh, for God's sake. Please. Go ahead, John. Jesus. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the June 9th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. 
So a second. Oh, second. Motion is second. Any questions from the board? From the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4 0. All right. You want it the bills list? The bills list of June 23rd, 2021. I make a motion that we approve the paying of our bills of $700,011,859.65, as well as making interfund transfers of $290,000. let us get this over with quickly. Second. Second. Two, there have to be two separate motions. It has to, have to be two separate motions? Have it's the, been uh, done like that for a thousand years? No, John, okay. you, you usually make a motion. To well, can I the put them together? Let me put them together. They're two different figures from two <laughs> different funds. I, I don't understand. All right. $711,859.65. Make a motion to pay the bills in that total amount. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions from the board? From the public? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion that the uh, make interfund transfers of $290,000. As per the bills list of June 9th, I guess, 2021. Uh, June 23rd, 2021. June 23rd, sorry. Uh, I have a motion to have a second. 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 Motion to second. Any questions from the board, from the public? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion that we approve the payment of $467,031.82 as per the bills list of July 14, 2021. Motion, second. Second. Any questions from the board? Yes. Um, the payment of uh, $1,213 to Bella Commercial Services for Cleaning the Bathrooms. Page. We are making a motion about paying. That's one of the bills. I just had a question about that. Yeah, but what page is it on? Page, page uh, one. Board, page one. Page one. Page one. Okay. okay. Um, this is because we do not have enough, uh, what do you call it? Seasonal uh, staff. Hirees for the summer part-time? Seasonal staff, correct. How, ma how, much, how many people have we hired? We have six. Six? How much do we pay them? Uh, this year, 15 an hour. 15 an hour? Good. Are we still looking for more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of those will be going back to college shortly. Really? Already? Yeah. It's August next month. Next month. Time flies, John. Wow. Yep, it does. Okay. That's the only question I had. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Nope. From the public? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Finally, I make a motion that we pay uh, transfer funds of $502,023.81 as per the bills list of July 14th. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Questions from the board? Public? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4 0. Thank you, sir. Uh, second round of public comment. If anyone has anything to say, please come up to the podium. Speak your piece. John D. April, Newtown Grant, biggest and the best. And uh, to those who can't comprehend up there, Newtown Grant has more residents than the borough. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Phil, for uh, representing me tonight and the residents in Newtown. What you got to put up with on your left is terrible. And as always, Kyle. Um, you know, uh, the guy that does the surveys up there, he should put, a, put out a survey so we should put a wall up around the borough or something like that. Uh, one of the reasons why I mentioned that earlier about the traffic is uh, the present mayor, who's not going to run anymore, but uh, Corky, uh, said at his uh, last campaign, campaign before he got reelected last time, said, Oh, yeah, and I'm going to look at trying to stop the traffic from the township coming through the borough. You know, and that's why that sticks in my head. you got to go through the township to get to the borough. What are you talking about? But uh, anyhow, um, you know, uh, again, uh, sorry for what you got to put over to you, you know, on your left over there, uh, the, you know, the table crew, you know. Thank you. Thank you, John. 
Anyone else for public comment? Okay, seeing none. Uh, old business. Uh, there is uh, committee appointments. Well, I, actually, I think this is just for one committee. I uh, think it's for the EDC. That's correct. Now, I know Mr. Fisher isn't here, but uh, we could, if everyone is okay with these appointments, we could proceed with them or wait for Mr. Fisher. I, I don't Let's know. Let's do it. I had a question. Is, yeah. is the one of the one of them on there, Dick Weaver, for the Technology and Communications Committee? Because I was told, uh, and he told me that he applied for this, and I don't see his name. No, I just, I, I just have these two, uh, Mr. Ed Tate and David Fisher, are the only two. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. Weaver is on a couple of committees. I, I know. That. Yeah. He's yeah. on the Finance Committee, and he's on the uh, he's on the Economic Development Committee as well. But he told me he applied for the Technology and Communications Committee. I have to speak to him. Okay. Tell him to get it. Yeah. Tell him to get it to uh, Olivia. Of course, I don't have any proof. Yeah, you know, but you know, <laughs> you, you throw Mr. Weaver's name around, so I believe. <laughs> um, okay, I'll, I'll just make the motion, uh, and both these appointments will be for the uh, Economic Development Committee. Uh, one is Mr. Ed F. Tate the third. And the other is David M. Fisher, uh, both Newtown residents, naturally. Is, I'll, make, um, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Well, let me make uh, the motion, okay. and then we have a decision. I'll make the motion to appoint these two gentlemen to the Economic Development Committee. Do I have a second? Second. The motion is second. Okay. Discussion. Yeah, is, is Mr. Tate on the uh, Council Rock School Board? Yes. Yes. Mr. Tate um, does work. With the Pennsylvania Biotech Center, and we have had lengthy discussions about how we can work together um, to get Newtown and Economic Development Committee together to forge through to find some ways to get some life science opportunities here. And having him on the committee would be a fantastic addition, especially because he already works there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. And any, Mr. Fisher is great, too, from his experience as well. Any other, uh, any other questions on these appointees uh, from the public? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 4-0. I guess um, Olivia will notify these, these two gentlemen. Now, I, I had a question where I guess the uh, EDC has a meeting tomorrow night. Um, okay. Okay. I, I had already mentioned to the chairman that I don't know if these gentlemen will be able to come to the meeting tomorrow. Uh, and Mr. Tate, I believe he works in New Jersey, so it'd be a heck of a, a fast ride for him to get here at four o'clock. So, um, but that's some, I know he could probably be at the next meeting. I don't know about this meeting tomorrow. So. He, he did mention to me his, his schedule is pretty flexible, so he, he potentially could be here, but okay. we'll figure it out. So thank you. I'll, I'll send him a link to the Thank you. Okay. Uh, any new business? I have something on the old business. Oh, old yeah, uh, If you don't mind, I think uh, we, last meeting or so, uh, Mr. Lewis was asked about uh, getting some more information about implementing a hybrid type of meeting for the Board of Supervisors, what technology and what costs that might be involved. Have you been able to do anything like that? Yes, yeah, so I, I spoke to our <coughs> AV uh, consultant and the equipment that's currently up in the booth cannot support that. <coughs> so the estimated cost is between $1,500 and $2,000 $2, to upgrade the equipment to be able to integrate a Zoom meeting into the live broadcast. So that, that would be the issue about how to uh, anybody that's participating on Zoom would have to go to the uh, live TV broadcast? It's the, the way I understand it, yes. I mean, is that required by the Sunshine Law, or? Mr. Sander? I don't believe so. What exactly is the question, Mr. The Mack? question is, if, for example, the Zoning Hearing Board had a iPad here for yes. one of their yes. members. I was there. 
if we did something like that, that of course would not necessarily be broadcast on Comcast simultaneously because that person is on a small screen here or maybe one of these screens. Well, does it have, does that person who's participating by Zoom, does that have to be integrated with the broadcast that goes out? Um, the, the law says that a, an elected official can participate uh, via telecommunications device provided that the elected official can hear everything that's being said and can be heard by everybody but I'm, else. Uh, I'm not even asking about elected officials. That's all, that's all it says. What about the public, though? What about the public? Can the public participate remotely? Is, not yeah, remotely? Yes, the, the public can participate remotely if you've got the technology to handle that. If the public, again, uh, participates remotely, they have to be able to hear what's going on and they have to be able to be heard. That's the only requirements of the telecommunications they have devices heard, uh, that are required to have that interaction. So they have to be heard by the Board of Supervisors? Correct. Of course. And, that's, and that's all the law requires? They have to be able to be heard by the Board of Supervisors and the rest of the public because some public comment can spur other public comment and they also have to be able to hear what right. the rest of the public is saying and what the Board of but Supervisors they, they is saying. they don't have to be transmitted to cable no. broadcast? No. Okay, so I that's, don't know that's, a, the, that's, a, that's something that, that the township does as a policy to open up its meetings to the widest number of, right. of people. But it's nice to have, but people have been telling me, I don't have the proof, that people are telling me, that they don't often have, they don't subscribe to Comcast anymore and they do uh, live streaming with the 21st century. And uh, so a lot right. of people do not have Comcast. Yeah, there's no requirement that um, everything that happens gets beamed out to, right. to Comcast or, or um, uh, what's the other one? Okay, I just wanted to let the uh, technology committee, who knows more about technology than I do, who've been discussing this, let them know exactly what um, may or may not be required. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a comment on that. Um, I don't, that's half the equation is how it gets out the door on the television. How do we handle it in this room, interacting? With, with us, with the external people. I don't see that, I mean. Well, the uh, zoning hearing board, like I mentioned, had it set up right here in the front, and she heard everything, and they heard her. That was what, what I'm saying is, if you're opening it to the public, let's say we have 30 people on Zoom out in the uh, world. I see. How do we interact with them well, without that's, like a video conference? I don't system? know. I, yeah. haven't, I haven't worked that when, when Mr. Calabro asked for public comment, you're going to look out here and you're going to see if anybody raises their hand or asks to be recognized. And then he's going to have to look at the screen and see if anybody has done the hand raise or otherwise unmuted themselves and wants to make a, a public comment. It'll just take that extra step to do that to ensure that participation by those participating via Zoom is, is permitted and allowed. I'm saying it's technically possible because I attended a webinar by the um, assistant township manager for Middletown who explained how they do it. And if Middletown can do it, I don't see why Newtown can't do it. So that's just my point of view. It, you said it was 1500 to $2,000 for new equipment. Is there a level of training that one would have to go through to do this as well? I, I would imagine so. I'm, and it would also be the the caveat of, of staffing uh, to how to, how to, who would be running it. So that's be even a more additional cost. Okay. Potentially. Okay. Well, don't we have, we're paying somebody right now to do this, right? To do that, what? To handle the equipment up there. Broadcast, yes, we're paying video gold to broadcast. We, we're going to need somebody else. He may need an, another staff member. He told you that? Know. What's that? Did he tell you that? I didn't ask that specific question. Well, uh, maybe you can get a more clear. Maybe I'll ask that question. Thank you. John wants proof. 
any other new old business. Is this old or new? We're still under old. old. Okay. okay. Do you have new business? I just wanted to uh, just chat. Then we have now it's new business. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to um, bring up um, from Mr. Fiddler's um, uh, synopsis of the Planning Commission and the Bucks County Planning. Uh, commission potentially providing us a proposal of their services and capabilities. I think that we should consider um, having the Planning Commission get a proposal from Bucks County Planning Commission to see what the capabilities are in helping us out with the economic development rezoning of the business commons. Is that that would be something I would think Mr. Lewis would do? Correct. I think. Yes, if it's if the, if it's a request to the board, I'll reach out to. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I mean, Mr. Stone. Mr. Fiddler made the, Mr. Fiddler can't go and negotiate. Right, I was saying like. But maybe Mr. We, Lewis can. He, yeah. yeah. If the if the board would support that. Yeah, we've we've done that before with the uh, Bucks County mm -hmm. Planning Commission. So. So the, you're going to ask for them to give us a proposal? Yes. Is, is it a consensus of the board to get, just go get a proposal from them, seeing what they're proposing and a price? Yeah. What are we proposing it for? For them to look at the. Uh, Zoning of the business comments. Yeah, sure. I mean, okay. Kyle, you have any problem with that? You know, only if it costs a lot of money. We don't know that yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think you have a consensus. So. I would imagine that you know it would be. Um, I know that um, Mr. Fiddler, the solicitor for the planning commission, and Michelle Fountain, our our planner, met with the county commission already. And, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be that costly uh, versus going out and getting consultants and so forth. And historically, I believe that the Bucks County Planning Commission has done a nice job in being in tune with what yeah. different townships are needed to move forward, especially in the 21st century. So, No, they're, they're the best consultants to have in regards to planning. I mean, the, uh, they're always at the uh, jointure and so on. So, Mr. Lewis, will we reach out to him and see what we could uh, come up with? Perfect. Thank you so much. Any other new business? Mr. Sander, any need for an executive session? No, sir. Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn. No one? All right. Without objection. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for coming.